Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the story about what, if Naruto Namake's Chunin exams Sasuke bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content, and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by TH3N3RB00K and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Blah Regular Speech. Blah Thoughts. Blah QB Speech Slash Thought Part Titles. Namake's Second Advent. Prologue. Six years after QB Ceiling, Naruto was running for his life along the streets of Konoha. A large crowd of people were chasing him down the streets. Naruto was thinking why the hell are these people chasing me? What did I do to them? His thoughts were cut off as someone threw a kunai that cut his arm. As Naruto ran, some of his blood fell on a seal bearing the Namake's clan seal. The minute his blood fell on the seal he was pulled into a secret household underground. There he found a scroll not any scroll but the Horatian scroll. Naruto picked up the scroll and was dragged into his mindscape. Kido you wish to learn this jutsu? W who the heck are you? I am the Kyubi no Yoko, but my actual name is Karama. You are the first person to know my name since the Sage of the Six Paths. Why are you inside me and aren't you supposed to be dead? Nope, you see I was forced to attack your village by a heartless manha brainwashed me and tried to make me destroy this village. Lucky for your village and unluckily for me, he sealed me in you. Then why am I here? Simply to learn from me so you will be able to protect yourself. So for the next six years, Naruto kept up his mask of idiotic happiness at the academy, while he secretly learned from Kurama later. He kept doing this until he mastered the Horatian at the age of ten. Two years later at the Genin graduation exam, Naruto took a deep breath and walked into the classroom to take the Genin exam. Chapter 2 Blah Regular Speech Blah Thoughts Blah QB Speak Slash Time Skip Disclaimer I do not own Naruto that's the way the cookie crumbles wait. Cookie? Gimme dat cookie. Chapter 1 Naruto entered the academy. The moment he entered he could hear the whispers of his classmates, saying things like hey look, the dobe's on time or watch as he fails. Naruto ignored the dobe comments and sat down. The dobe was all just a mask, he realized that if he was smart the village would be even more hostile towards him. After a few minutes Iraka came in, told the students to shut up using his giant demonic head no just to and started the test. The first portion was the written portion of the test. Naruto knew how to do all the questions but missed a few on purpose to keep up the dobe act. Right after that was the accuracy test. They were supposed to throw shuriken and kunai and hit eight vital points on the body. Naruto would have used the three-pronged Horatian kunai, but he didn't want to attract attention to himself, so he just used the standard kunai he bought from one of the nicer people in the stores. Pretending it was a fluke, he hit all eight targets dead on. What the hell? There is no way you can do better that Sasuke-kun. A certain pink-haired banshee screeched. A slash N. If you don't know who this is then you need to read more Naruto manga. The last part of the test was the Bushin no Jutsu. Naruto was actually nervous because he knew of his horrid chakra control due to Kurama, the nine-tailed fox. As he went inside the ninjutsu room he did the Bunshin no Jutsu only to create a pathetic-looking clone that promptly poofed away. You fail! Was all Naruto heard from Iruka. Mizuki, on the other hand, tried to help Naruto pass but was kept out. After the exam Mizuki headed over to where Naruto was sitting on the swing by himself, watching all the newly made genin show off their hitai to their parents. Mizuki walked over to Naruto and said I have a way to help you pass the genin exam. Iruka woke up to someone frantically pounding on his door. Iruka! It's Naruto, he snapped and stole the forbidden scroll. What? I'll be right out. As he left Mizuki gave a creepy laugh and did a victory dance in his head. Little did he know that Naruto was already onto his plans and took the scroll to help his arsenal of jutsu. Alright the first jutsu is Kagebunshin? Ah Jesus day just gets worse and worse a certain spiky blonde haired kid said. I'll just write these down to learn later on. After two hours Naruto had written down three jutsus. He had the Kagebunshin, the Bunshin Daibakuha, and the Shiki Fujin. Then, Iruka found him. Naruto-hi? Why did you take the scroll? Mizuki-sensei told me that if I learn a single jutsu from this scroll I could pass the exam. hee hee ha Iruka. Naruto you two really are a bunch of idiots a certain traitor with a couple of giant ass shuriken said. Naruto, Naruto, Naruto do you know why the villagers hate you? Actually I do. I know about your plan to steal the scroll. It's because wait what? Mizuki screeched. Yep I already know. It's because of the QB, who for the record didn't attack Kanoha out of his free will. Yeah right demon scum. I'll kill you and your precious Iruka sensei right now. Naruto had other plans. He threw a tri-pronged kunai at Mizuki's feet. Mizuki jumped, and it landed behind him. 
Did you really think a simple kanai could stop the likes of me, a chunin? Not just a kanai Mizuki a certain kind of kanai Naruto said as he reappeared behind Mizuki in a yellow flash, along with a kanai touching Mizuki's neck. HH how did you do that? Simple. A certain jutsu no as Horation. Oh shit were Mizuki's last words as Naruto stabbed the kanai into Mizuki's neck killing him. How how did you learn the Horation? Sorry, but I can't tell you. And also, please keep this as you would keep an SS rank secret. Please Irika sensei Okay Naruto. I'll do that for you. And Naruto please come here and close your eyes. Naruto did as he was told, and went to Iruka. He closed his eyes and as he did so, he felt a cloth cover his forehead. Can I open my eyes now? Yes. Naruto opened his eyes and saw that Iruka was missing his Hitaite. Congratulations Naruto, you pass Iruka said with a grin after getting your team tomorrow. I'll even treat you to a Chiraku ramen. Do you mean it? Yeah. yeah. Ramen. Naruto yelled as he tackled Iruka. Next day, Naruto walked into class proudly wearing the Hitaite Iruka gave him. Yes. Naruto kun made it. Hinata thought. Dobe, why are you here? You're just an imbecile a duck but haired person told him. A slash n, guess who? See the headband? I'm a Konoha ninja now. How dare you talk to Sasuke like that you eyesore? Sakura screamed. Like what you banshee? Everyone in the room immediately shut up. Everyone knew that Naruto had a crush on Sakura what the hell's going on. Yeah you heard me, I called you a banshee. Now stop screaming at me before I kick your ass out of here you pink haired witch. Naruto said with a ton of killer intent. At that, Sakura promptly shut up and went back to fighting other fangirls over Sasuke. Okay, now for your team assignments. Iruka said. Naruto zoned out until he heard. Team 7 Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, led by Hataki Kakashi. At this Naruto thought, Kami must really hate me. Teammate Hyuga Hinata, Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino, led by Yuhi Kurinai. Team 9 will remain the same. Team 10 Yamanaka Ino, Akimichi Choji, Nara Shikamaru, led by Saratobi Asuma. At this, a large cloud of smoke appeared, and out of it came the Genin's new senseis. Well, except for one. Why is Kakashi not here yet? Sakura shouted. Banshee, do the world a favor and shut the hell up. Naruto told her. At this moment, two hours after everyone else had left, Kakashi arrived. Me first impression is you're all a bunch of runts. Meet on the roof in five and with that, Kakashi vanished. Team 7 headed up the stairs and onto the roof. Okay, tell me your name, likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dream for the future. Sensei, why don't you start first? Okay, my name is Kakashi Hataki. I like things I won't tell you, and I dislike things I won't tell you. My hobbies are things you need not know, and my dream for the future I am saying nothing. All we learned was his name Team 7 thought. Okay, Blondie you first. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, training, and Iruka Sensei. I dislike the three minutes it takes cup ramen to cook, people who look down on others based on power, Sasuke team, and the pink-haired banshee Sakura. My hobbies are eating ramen, training and learning new jutsu, and my dream for the Futurius to become the next Hokage so all the villagers will respect me. Very good, Pinky, you're next. My name is Sakura Haruno, I like dash, glances at Sasuke and blushes, I dislike Naruto Baka, my hobbies are dash, glances at Sasuke and blushes even more. And my dream is, glances at Sasuke blushes even more than the last one. So you like blushing, dislike Naruto, your hobbies are blushing, and your dream is to blush okay. You with the duck butt hair, you're next. My name is Sasuke Uchiha, I like very little things, I dislike many other things, I don't have a hobby, and my ambition is to kill a certain individual. Great another stuck Uchiha Avenger Y Kami, why? Good for you. Now team 7, meet me tomorrow, training ground 7, at 7 a.m., and don't eat breakfast cause you'll puke. And with that, Team 7 left. The next day, Naruto woke up at 5.30 a.m. He knew that Kakashi would be late so he ate two cup ramen and drank two cups of milk. He sprinted to training ground 7 to meet the rest of his team and Kakashi. 7 a.m. Where is Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. How the hell am I supposed to know? He just told us to be here at 7 a.m. And Sakura. Yes? Shut the fuck up. Dejectedly Sakura sat down. Naruto arrived and the team waited until 9 a.m. before Kakashi showed up. You're late. Sakura yelled. Ah, well I was walking over here when I had to save some fish from drowning. Now let's begin. All of you will try to get these bells from me. As you can see, there are two. Wait, but there's three of us. That's the point. Whoever doesn't get a bell will get tied to this pole and watch the others eat. 
If you all fail to get the bell, all three of you will be tied up as I eat all of your lunches. What? Okay, you all have one hour, begin. Everyone leaped away. Naruto understood that in order to win, they all had to work together as a team, otherwise, how could three genin fresh out of the academy beat a jonin of Kakashi's caliber? He immediately jumped to Sakura's position and said Sakura, before you start screaming, this is a test of teamwork. How could we genin beat a jonin? After five minutes Naruto managed to get Sakura to understand that the test was about teamwork. Now to find Sasuke. Sasuke, unfortunately for him, was stuck with only his head above the ground. This was the result of a dotan, Shinju Zanshu no Justu. Naruto and Sakura found him and by convincing him that the test was about teamwork, and Naruto promising that he would give the bell he might take to him slash Sakura, Sasuke was freed from the jutsu. For some reason, Sakura didn't faint because she actually thought it through. Kakashi was reading his Aika Aika novel when Naruto jumped out and threw a Horatian kunai at him. Kakashi's eyes widened and he thought there's no way this kid could use sensei's jutsu unless his thoughts were cut off when he felt the cold steel of a kunai against his throat. Naruto sliced the kunai and Kakashi went poof. The real Kakashi jumped out of a tree and pinned Naruto down, only to find that Naruto used the kawarini. Kakashi heard a buzzing sound and the next thing that happened was that he was missing his bells. Sakura and Sasuke each had a bell. A slash n. By the way the only one who saw Naruto use Horatian was Kakashi. The other two were hiding beneath the ground and would only hear the signal. Okay you two got the bell. Naruto, that means you'll be tied up to the post while the others eat lunch. And you can't give any food to Naruto. Fine. Naruto said. Naruto was tied to the post while Sasuke and Sakura ate lunch. While eating her lunch Sakura was pestering Sasuke about a date while she was taunting Naruto about not getting a lunch. At this moment, Kakashi showed up. Sakura, you show no respect for a fellow teammate and comrade. Sasuke saying to you, because of this you fail, and you will all be sent back to the academy. But Sensei Sakura tried to say, No buts, you all failed to understand the meaning of teamwork. But we worked together to get the bells why in Sakura. Yes, you did that but you did not help your teammate. All I saw was Naruto doing all the work, and you two coming up to take the credit for what he did. Sensei, this was my plan. I was to be a diversion so Sasuke and Sakura could get the bells. I've already failed the graduation exam many times so I could care less if I pass or not just pass those two and I'll go back. Naruto said, You know what, just because of Naruto's words about his plan, I will pass you guys, but let this be a lesson about teamwork in all kinds. A slash N. I know, it's a cliche, I couldn't think of another decent reason. Thank you sensei. Sakura said, Okay team 7, dismissed. Except for you Naruto, I want to speak to you in private. After everyone left, Naruto took Kakashi to his apartment. Sensei? What was it you wanted to talk to me about? How did you learn the Horatian? Well, you know about my tenant, right? Yes, I know of your tenant. Well, when I was six I was being chased by this giant group of villagers who wanted to kill me. I got Naruto tells the story of how he found the Horatian scroll and the Horatian kunai. Suga. Well, I hope you go very far in your shinobi career. Thanks, sensei. So with that Kakashi left, and Team Seven's missions began. A few months later. Okay, Scarecrow in position. Blossom, are you in position? Blossom in position, Sunshine, you in position? Roger, in position, fish cake, grab the target. Roger that. Naruto jumped on the village's most horrible demon since the cubitor of the cat. Naruto grabbed the cat and almost had his eyes clawed out. They checked for the ribbon, and seeing it was there, dragged the cat back to the mission room. Oh Tora I missed you so much. Why do you keep running away? The daimyo's wife squealed while damn near choking the cat to death. If I was the cat, I'd run to thought Naruto. Now Team 7, for your next mission you could pull some weeds, walk dogs, catch the Tora again, or, no. I request a higher ranked mission because these deranked missions do not show the true power of the Uchiha clan. You guys are only gen and fresh out of the academy. You can't go around requesting this and that. Yes I can, because I'm one of the great Uchihas. Very well you will escort the bridge builder Tazuna to Nami no Kuni to protect him as he finishes a bridge. Tazuna, you may come in now. Hey Gakis, I am the super great bridge builder Tazuna. Eh? You told me these would be shinobi, not some wimpy children. Don't worry Tazuna, these are shinobi. Ha! Huh? I bet Mr. Dark and Gloomy over there couldn't life a kunai. At that Sasuke slammed into Tazuna. Don't insult me or my clan. Yeah, don't insult Sasuke Kun. Or we'll beat you up. Shinaro. Eh sorry, I'm a bit under the weather. Okay team 7, grab your gear and meet at the gate in one hour. Kakashi ordered. Chapter 3. Blah speech. Blah thoughts. Blah cubi talk. 
Block QB thought. Disclaimer. IOWN Narrate dash asterisk gets beaten up by Kishimoto san asterisk IT take B back T that SS statement I do not own Naruto. A slash N. Goman Nasai. I was a bit busy with other stuff to do so I'm sorry about the late update. No flames please. And thank you to all the reviewers. Chapter 2. Naruto had one hour to get his stuff ready before he had to go. He decided to get himself out of his kill me orange jumpsuit. He went to Higurishi's ninja shop because they were the only ones who didn't kick him out, or sold him defective weapons. Hey Naruto, what brings you here? Tenten asked. I finally got a mission that takes us outside the village and I was hoping to get something other than orange. Yeah, you definitely need something that's not orange if you don't want to get killed. After half an hour Naruto was fitted with black umbu style pants with an orange stripe down each side. He had a black shirt as well as a black and orange jacket. He also got a larger kunai holster for his Horatian kunai. No one other than Iruka, Kakashi, and the third Hokage know about him using Horatian. How much do I owe you? Naruto asked after getting outfitted. That'll be 700 real please. Naruto paid and went to his house to retrieve his scroll with his gear. He arrived when Sasuke and Sakura did. Needless to say they were surprised by him not wearing a ton of orange. They also noticed that he didn't have a pack. Naruto, why don't you have a pack? Sakura screeched. Haruno, I already have all my gear sealed into this scroll. Naruto said. Kakashi arrived minutes later along with the Tizuna. All right Team 7 move out. So Team 7 left the gates of the village with Tizuna the drunken bridge builder. As Team 7 walked along, Naruto noticed a puddle on the ground. It hasn't rained in days man these ninja are idiots Naruto thought. Don't let your guard down though kit. Remember, there's two of us. As they moved along, two ninja burst out from the puddle and wrapped Kakashi in their chains. One down as they ripped Kakashi into bits. Kakashi-sensei! Sakura screeched. Naruto immediately decked one of the two ninja and tied him up using wires. Sasuke pinned the ninja's chain to a tree, decked him like Naruto did, and beat him unconscious. After that, Kakashi promptly reappeared to interrogate the still-conscious ninja. Kakashi noticed that the two ninja were Kirigaku missing in the demon brothers Gozu and Meizu. Who's your target? Kakashi asked. Fuck off. Okay, we'll play it your way. Too violent for a fanfic. After the ordeal, Gozu was severely bruised and had at least 10 broken bones, as well as being mentally scarred. I'll tell just don't kill me we were assigned to kill Tizuna. With that, Kakashi turned to Tizuna. Why did you lie to us? This is at least a high B rank now. This is for Chunin to low Jonin. I am sorry, Wave Country right now is super poor and there's a super bad man by the name of Gato. Wait, Gato of Gato Shipping Company? The same one, he set his filthy hands on Wave and seized control. He kills all who get in his way. You have to help us please. Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, what do you guys think? Sensei, with all due respect, I think all of us combined can kick the ass of whoever dares to come over to attack the old man. Well, I guess we'll still do it, but Wave will owe us at least B rank pay, maybe A rank pay depending on who tries to kill you. Thank you. Wave is super grateful for your help. Kakashi sweat dropped at this. As they walked along, Naruto heard a rustling in the bushes. He threw a kunai to the location of the sound. Naruto Baka quit throwing sharp objects at random sounds. Sakura screamed. Naruto went over to investigate and saw a white rabbit. Wait a minute a rabbit at this time shouldn't be white height should be brown. Kakashi was thinking the same as Naruto. Oops I guess I need to be more careful with my kunai. You almost killed a poor defenseless rabbit. Sakura screeched. Everyone get down. Kakashi yelled as a giant sword flew right by where their heads would have been. So a wimpy genin team protecting an old man this should be easier than I thought. Zabuza demon of the mist. Ah, uh, so I see you know my name copy ninja Kakashi. Team 7, retreat and protect the client. Zabuza's mind Kakashi said as he pulled up his hatai to reveal a Sharingan eye. Sharingan? Where the hell did he get one of those? Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto thought. So the fight began, Sabuza started it off with a Kirigaku no Jutsu, to which Kakashi was stunned as he couldn't see through the mist. He had kidneys, heart, liver, lungs, spine, clavicle vein, neck vein, brain, all the choices to choose from Zabuza said from the mist. Kakashi immediately understood and jumped in front of Tazuna to block Zabuza's sword from slicing him in half. Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi and ran a kanai into Kakashi's back only to find out Kakashi was a shadow clone. Kakashi reappeared behind Zabuza only to get kicked into the water. Zabuza shun shined behind Kakashi and used the Swiro no Jutsu. You can't escape Kakashi. Team 7, take Tazuna and run. Protect the client. 
Sabuza created a Mizu Bunshin and reactivated his Kirigaku no Jutsu around Naruto so the rest of Team 7 couldn't help him. I'll take care of you first, runt, Naruto responded by hurling a Horatian Kunai at Sabuza's feet. Sabuza jumped only to see a yellow flash out of the corner of his eye. Naruto kicked Sabuza's ass literally to make him drop the Swiro no Jutsu. Why you little runt? Sabuza yelled as he tried to slice Naruto, only for Kakashi to block the blade with a Kunai. Kakashi? What the hell have you been teaching him? I swear to Kami I saw Kanoha's Kiroi no Senko again. That is the wonder of Naruto. He learned this all by himself. Eh? Zabuza shouted. Geez, maybe I should have went to your village instead of being a missing mean Zabuza stated. You still can Zabuza. Sorry, but a job is a job. Zabuza said as he began the seals for Swaitan, Suryodin, only for Kakashi to do the same thing. Two giant water dragons burst out from the two water dragons clashed with each other for dominance until Kakashi used the Swaitan, Daibakufu on Zabuza. A massive blue vortex of chakra-powered water engulfed Zabuza. Zabuza was pinned a tree after the giant water vortex and Kakashi kept him there with a few kunai. But before he could kill Zabuza, a pair of Saban pierced through his neck. Kakashi checked Zabuza's pulse. He's dead. Kakashi said, Thank you for capturing this dangerous missing nin. I am grateful for your help, a hunter Nin said. And with that, the hunter Nin vanished with Zabuza's body. Kakashi put his Hitai back over his eye, took a step and collapsed. Kakashi Sensei. All three genin shouted. The three genin carried Kakashi the rest of the way to Tazuna's house where Tazuna's daughter, Tsunami, greeted them and showed them their rooms. One day later, Kakashi woke up after being out due to chakra exhaustion. Team 7 immediately jumped to his side and asked if he was okay. He said he was but added something that this'll scare you but Zabuza is still alive, eh? The genin shouted. It was kinda obvious with the hunter Nin taking Zabuza's body away instead of disposing it on the spot Naruto thought. Starting tomorrow I will be teaching you how to climb trees without using your hands. The next day, a slash n. I just got rid of the entire dinner thing, after the tree climbing, with Naruto's outburst so don't flame me. Underscore. Okay, you all will climb these trees using your chakra. Concentrate it like so Kakashi climbs a tree using his chakra and run up the tree. Use these kanai to mark how far you get. So the genin began training. Sasuke ran about 20 steps up the tree before his control slipped and he face planted on the ground. Sakura managed to get to the top of her branch. And Naruto, still playing the role of the idiot everyone thinks he is, took a step and slipped. Ha 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 ha. Sakura laughed as Naruto picked himself off the ground. Jeez, why did I even try? A few hours later after Sakura left, Sasuke went up to Naruto and said, Naruto, drop the mask. What mask team? You know what I'm talking about. Nope, no idea. Quit screwing around. All right, jeez. Naruto went from his goofy mask to what he normally is like without his team. He took on a more depressed look and asked, So how do you guess Sasuke team? Judging by how you act, and by how you treated Sakura when we got our teams, and you being smart? Something was up Sasuke explained with a smug look. And you want to know why? Naruto, I heard from Sensei that you lost your family, just like me. I just want to get to know you better. Really? Yes, I'm being completely honest with you. Well okay then. But seriously, why do the villagers glare at you like that? I've seen them glare at you, kick you out of their shop, and call you a demon. What the hell's up with that? It hits complicated, and it an s rank secret. I really want to know. Sorry Sasuke, I can't tell you until I completely trust you I've been backstabbed too many times, figuratively and literally then I'll have to earn your trust. I have a question for you as well. Why are you such an asshole? What? You know, before this chat. Oh that. I just hate Sakura cause she does nothing except scream her head off. Plus, the council of dumbass would think I was under control by you. For what it's worth, thanks for helping us pass that test. Sasuke said with a smile. A slash n. Yes, you read it right, a smile. In this fanfic I'm changing Sasuke a bit so he's not an emo faggot with a stick shoved up his ass. You too. Naruto said with a genuine smile. A few days later, Team 7 minus Naruto went to the bridge to finish up the last step of building it. All of a sudden, a deep mist rolled in. Everyone was instantly on guard as they had seen this jutsu before. Well, 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 we meet again. Copy Ninja Kakashi and his runts. Zabuza Momochi figured you were alive. Kakashi said. Let's not waste time now. Agreed. Both ninjas jumped at each other while Sasuke fought Haku. Meanwhile, Naruto woke up with a start. Eh? They left me behind? How could they? As he ranted, he heard a crash and a scream. Inari and his mother were tied up by two ex-samurai. 
Naruto ran down the stairs and threw a Horatian kunai at the two ex-samurai. Hee hee, stupid kid, did you really think that would work? Of course it won't work. But this will Naruto said as he disappeared in a yellow flash, and reappeared behind both ex-samurai with a kunai to their necks. Son of a bitch were the ex-samurai's last words as Naruto slit their throats, killing them. He untied Tsunami and Inari and promptly ran to the bridge where Kakashi and Zabuza were locked in combat, while Haku opened the Kano Wu Pass on Sasuke, with his Maki Ohayosho. Right as Haku jumped out of the mirror to make another pass at Sasuke, he was kicked in the face by Naruto. Kanoha's number one unpredictable ninja is here to save the day. To be continued. Chapter 3 Kanoha's number one unpredictable ninja is here to save the day. Damn it Naruto just go save Sasuke. The pink banshee screamed. Shut the fuck up already. I swear if I hear another go save Sasuke I will kick your ass so hard your KIDSLO feel it. Sasuke shouted from within the Maki Ohio show. Well that was unexpected must hate fangirls more than I thought Naruto and Kakashi thought. Naruto took a look at the mirror and created five Kagebunshins. He experimentally threw a shuriken at the ice mirror to see what would happen. What happened was that the mysterious hunter Nin popped out of the mirror and grabbed Naruto's shuriken out of the air. As the fake hunter Nin did this, Naruto jumped and axe kicked the fake hunter Nin out of the mirror. However, the fake hunter Nin backhanded Naruto away and jumped back into the mirror. Zabuza noticed this and used a wind jutsu to knock Naruto into the dome of ice mirrors. Immediately Naruto was turning into a human porcupine with all the Senban in him. Meanwhile, Kakashi was having trouble finding where Zabuza was in the thick, chakra-enhanced mist, when he heard Naruto and Sasuke's screams of pain. Back in Haku's Maki Ohio show, Naruto and Sasuke were desperately trying to avoid Haku's Senban needles. However, this was hopeless as they just got peppered with so many needles they looked like human porcupines. As they dodged Sasuke began to see the needles in slow motion. Wait, did I just yes Sasuke thought in his mind? He had just unlocked his Sharingan. But for all the Sharingan's worth, he was still too tired and peppered with needles to do something. He ended up being knocked out with a needle in his neck. Thankfully it wasn't fatal. Naruto noticed that Sasuke went down. In between attacks he managed to toss Sasuke out of the mirrors. What's this kid doing Haku thought as Naruto began throwing odd, tri-pronged kunai at Haku's feet during attacks. Karama, can you lend me some chakra? I need another way to wear down his mirrors Naruto thought. Here you go kit, don't blame me if you lose control. Karama said. Now you thought you had speed? Let me show you true speed Naruto said as he was coated in a red chakra cloak. Vanished in a yellow flash and began attacking Haku's mirrors so fast they began to wear down from Karama's chakra. Outside the mirrors. All Sakura saw outside the Maki Ohayosho were yellow flashes of light. That must be Sasuke Kiyun. He's so awesome. Sakura squealed in her mind back inside. I am possible. He's wearing my mirrors down. T this can't be happening, it shouldn't be. Haku thought. Eventually with all the chakra wearing down Haku's Maki Ohayosho, the real Haku had to jump out of the mirrors, fearing for his life. Naruto then knocked Haku out with a bijou enhanced punch to the face. Sakura looked at where Naruto was standing over Haku, with an unconscious Sasuke a few feet away. Naruto! What have you done to Sasuke Kuyen? Sakura asked or screeched. Ah, uh, shut the fuck up you howler monkey, I did nothing. Naruto replied. Meanwhile, Kakashi had Zabuza trapped by his dog summons. Any last words, demon of the mist? Kakashi asked. Zabuza didn't reply and spat at Kakashi. Very well Kakashi said as he prepared a Raikiri. But before he could do that Zabuza was shot from behind by an arrow. He he he, not so tough now are you baby demon of the mist Gata said with a sneer. Zabuza cursed Gatu. But before he died he asked Kakashi, take Haku to Konoha with you, he'll have a better life there. I'll try Zabuza, I'll try Kakashi replied with a sad look. Even though Zabuza was an enemy, Kakashi still felt bad for him as he didn't die from an honorable kill in battle, but from an underhanded blow from a third party. At this moment, Naruto saw what happened and prepared to eliminate Gata's army of thugs. Naruto threw a Horatian Kanai while using the Kanai Kage Bunshin to make his one Kanai, 50 Kanai. The kunai landed amongst the bandits and thugs' feet. Ha! The little wimp is so weak he can't hit us with a kunai. The bandits shouted with glee. At this moment an arrow landed in front of them. The bandits saw Inari and the entire village behind him with pitchforks and other weapons. Even an old man held a cane in a threatening manner. We'll teach you not to interfere with us. The villagers shouted. They're all weak villagers. Destroy them all and you get double the pay. Gata screamed. The bandits shouted in glee and raised their weapons. Stand back Naruto told the villagers, 
as a red chakra cloak formed around him. I'll take care of this trash. The villagers in Sakura could only watch in shock as Naruto vanished in a yellow flash and completely annihilated Gata's band of thugs in a matter of seconds. Now he stood right in front of Gata with a kanai inches from Gata's face. D don't kill me. I'll give you money, land, power, women, anything. Just don't kill me. Gata whimpered. Anything? Naruto asked. Why yes. Anything. Gata said in relief. Then bring back all the villagers you killed, and Zabuza. If you do that I'll let you live. Naruto said with a demonic voice. He even looked demonic as his clothes were covered in blood, as well as having a demonic red chakra cloak. I can't do that Gata said in a fear-laden voice. Then too bad, you will die here and now. Naruto roared as he stabbed the kanai to the hilt in Gata's stomach, then ripping the kanai upwards through Gata's ribcage, throat, etc. and literally tearing Gata apart in a shower of blood and guts. Everyone was shocked, even Sasuke who just woke up to the ever so pleasant sight of blood and guts. It was at this time where Naruto regained control. Oh my Kami, what have I done? Naruto screamed after seeing what he did, before collapsing. After a few minutes of shock silence, the villagers realized that Gatu was dead and began celebrating the death of Gatu. Team 7, Tizuna, and Inari were going to take Naruto back to Tizuna's house, but Naruto was gone. Naruto woke up the next day and remembered the day before events. Ah, you're awake, a hooded man said. W, where am I? Naruto asked trying to see the man's face. In my tent. The man replied denying Naruto from seeing his face. Who are you? Naruto asked. Someone you'll either love or hate in a few short minutes. The man mysteriously replied. Hearing this Naruto pulled out a Horatian kunai as they were all he now carried. He threw his standard kunai at rustling bushes along the way to Nami no Kuni. Where the hell did you get that? The man shouted, surprised. None of your business. Naruto replied. Sorry, it's just the fact I made those kunai kinda makes it my business. Don't you think? The man said. Wait, if you made the kunai why wouldn't I me? Naruto shouted in surprise. Be but you're supposed to be dead. A are you a ghost? Laughing, the man took off his hood to show the yandame, Minato Namikaze. No, Naruto, I'm not a ghost. Honestly, I thought I was supposed to be dead too. The story Kami gave me when she revived me was that she told the Shinigami, flashback no jutsu, you better send Minato to my court as he is deserving of no punishment, or else Kami told the Shinigami, why should I? He made the contract. The Shinigami replied, I'll ask you one more time well. You. Send. Minato. To. My. Court. Kami asked in a dangerous tone, I refuse the Shinigami said, then you leave me no choice. Kami said as she took Minato's soul from the Shinigami's stomach. Give him back. The Shinigami shouted as they began a childish fight over the soul. Who knew gods were like children? Both deities lost their grip as Minato's soul fell from Kami's court down to northwest of Wagakure, where it took on Minato's form. You idiot! Look what you did! The Shinigami shouted. Not my fault, I warned you! Kami said with a grin. Although this'll prove interesting I'll make you a deal, if Naruto hates his father Minato. You get to keep Minato's soul when he dies. If Naruto loves his father, then I get to take Minato's soul to my court. Deal. The Shinigami said. Flashback no jutsu. Kai. Back to where Minato was with Naruto. And that's the story. Wowzu you're my father? Naruto asked in a deadly calm voice. Yes Naruto, I am the Yandame, the man who sealed the Kyubi into you, as well as your father. Minato said with a sad voice, as he felt Naruto deserved to learn everything. Naruto replied by punching Minato in the stomach as hard as he could, in Kami's court. Ha! I win! The Shinigami gleefully shouted. Wait, it's not over yet. Kami said. Back in the elemental nations, Naruto punched Minato in the stomach as hard as he could, and then hugged him, while saying, Why the hell did you seal the Kyubi in your own son? Why? Naruto asked. Minato hugged Naruto back while replying, I'm sorry Naruto, I really am. But I couldn't just ask any parent to give up their child now could I? It's okay dad I forgive you. Just don't leave me alone again Naruto sobbed. I will Naruto, I will, and I never go back on my word. Minato said, back in Kami's court. Ha! I win! Kami shouted with glee. The Shinigami responded by yelling curses. Back in the elemental nations. So what do you do now dad? Naruto asked. Probably hide my appearance as I do not want to draw a crowd. Also, tell me Naruto. Did the villagers honor my final wish? Minato asked. If by final wish you mean telling the villagers to beat me until I almost died, 
Every day until I was ten, then yes, they followed your wish. Naruto said grimly. Minato had a look of utter shock and horror which was replaced by enough anger and rage to make even Achiha Madara shit his pants. They did what? Minato roared. Yep, that's what they did. Naruto said. Then I'll go into the village with my appearance revealed and see what they think of that Minato said with barely controlled rage. Oh and also, who is your sensei Naruto? Hataki Kakashi, chronically late. Horrible excuses. Oh, you had my student. But horrible excuses and being late him interesting. Minato said. Yep, Naruto answered. Let's go back to the bridge. Minato said. Actually, Dad, let's go to the village where I'm staying. Naruto said. Okay, give me a sec. I gotta change. Minato said as he went to change. Minato came back a few minutes later in his Yandame Hokage outfit. Let's go, Minato said. They got to the village right before the remainder of Team 7 left. Sasuke turned around, saw Minato, turned pale, and said, Holy shit a ghost! Before diving behind Kakashi. A slash N, Sasuke will be a bit OOC in this fanfic. Huh? Kakashi said as he turned around and saw Minato and Naruto. Long time no see Kakashi. Minato said with a grin. G-G-G-G-G-G ghost. Kakashi said paling. T the Yandame. Sakura said if he'll train Sasuke, then Sasuke will be invincible Sakura thought with a squeal. No, Kakashi, I'm alive. Minato said as he formed a raisin gan in his palm as proof. How are you alive? Kakashi shouted. Minato proceeded to give the same story he gave Naruto. I see, that's an interesting story sensei, oh hi Naruto. Naruto responded with an annoyed glance. Now let's go back to the village where I have a little something to settle with them Minato said with an evil grin. That's the first time I ever saw him with that grin I almost feel bad for those villagers. Key word being almost Kakashi thought. The next day, Team 7 and Minato were getting ready to leave. The villagers stopped them at the bridge before they left. Nisan, do you really have to go? Inari asked. Sorry, but I have a duty to my village. Naruto replied. I'll miss you. Inari sobbed. Damn it, I said I wouldn't cry. Don't worry Inari, crying while you're happy is a good thing. Naruto said. You all saved this village, and Nami no Kuni. Thank you. A sober Tazuna said. Well, we gotta go, see ya. Naruto said. After Team 7 left the villagers were in a discussion on what to name the bridge. Let's name it the Super Great Super Sake Bridge. Tazuna said. Tsunami whacked him over the head with a frying pan. No, let's name it the Great Naruto Bridge. Inari shouted, to which the villagers all began cheering for. Team 7 and Minato arrived at the gates of Konoha. The two Chunin guards asked, Team and Missy holy shit the Yandame's ghost. Kakashi replied, Team 7 returning from C-ranked mission bumped up to A-ranked mission due to interference by one Momochi Zabuza. The guards did the only thing they could, they fainted. Minato chuckled and left with Team 7 to the Hokage's office. Hello Team 7 and what the hell? Saratobi said. Hello there Saratobi. Minato spat. Do tell me on how my son was treated here. A heir you see Saratobi said before he was cut off by Minato. Save it. You're not strong enough to be Hokage. The civilian council has you under their thumbs. I'll show them what another meaning of Hokage is. I'll be taking my spot back, kay? Minato asked with a dangerous tone. Oh, of course. Oh, and have fun with the paperwork. Saratobi joked, trying to lighten up the mood. Paperwork? Solved that problem when I first took the hat. Minato said with a grin. Nanny? Tell me. Saratobi begged. I'm considering how well you carried out my request now, I'll leave you to figure it out. And call the council for a meeting. I have a surprise in store Minato said with an evil grin. Hi, Yandame Sama the secretary, who surprisingly kept her cool said, a few hours later, what is the meaning of this? Why did you call us to a meeting Hokage Sama? A civilian councilman asked. So who gave you the right to question the Hokage's orders? Minato asked with a deadly tone. His chair is turned away from the council. Wait, you aren't Sandame Sama, are you? Shikaka asked. You're right, I'm not the Sandame. I'm the Yoindiaimi. Minato said as he turned his chair around. Impossible. The Yandame died years ago. A pink-haired civilian councilwoman by the name of Saya Hirano screeched. Minato responded by using Hiroshin to teleport behind the woman. Any other doubts? Minato asked. Seeing a bunch of head shaking no he said now, I've called you here to ask why the fuck did you not follow my final order to treat the boy like a hero? What boy? Kohara asked. The one I sealed the QB into. Why was he beaten every day of his life until he was ten? Minato shouted. Oh it's Saya said with disgust, you mean the fox? 
It's evil so we treat it like we treat all other evil beings. Tell me why you called my son it? Minato said. Why your son? Saya said. Yes, my son. Minato replied with a smirk. The entire council was shocked to say the least. That demon is no son of yours. He corrupted you. We'll take care of him as we did the previous demon whore. Saya screeched. Took care of who? Minato shouted. The previous demon whore. The one with long red hair, like a demon. Saya said smugly. Too bad it didn't die and is still in a coma. At this, Minato shook with rage. He then shouted, ANBU. Take Sayo Haruno to Ibiki and Anko. I want every bit of information she knows. What? You can't do that. I'm part of the council. Saya screeched. I don't give a flying fuck what you're a part of, because as of now, the civilian council no longer exists. If you are not a shinobi, get the hell out. That includes you Danzu, Koharu, and Hamura. We are the council. You will obey the will of the council. A fat pompous councilman said. Treason, attempting to subjugate the Hokage. Anbu, execute him. Minato said. Anbu promptly decapitated the man and dragged all the civilian council out except for Saya Haruno who was taken to the torture and interrogatin division. Any more questions? Minato asked. No, sir. The shinobi council replied. An hour later Minato called all the jonin sensei for a meeting. Needless to say, all of them were shocked to see Minato. This meeting was called to see who wishes to enter their team into the Chunin exams. Minato said, I, Hataki Kakashi, nominate Team 7 to enter the Chunin exams. Kakashi said, I, Yuhi Karinai, nominate Team 8 to enter the Chunin exams. Karinai said, I, Saratobi Asuma, nominate Team 10 to enter the Chunin exams. Asuma said, A few other Jonins nominated their teams as well. Very well. Here are your forms. Now go. Minato said. Iruka had nothing to say as he knew Naruto would have no problem in the Chunin exams. The next day, Kakashi called Team 7 for a meeting. Okay everyone, take these forms. They're for the Chunin exams that are in a week. I'm nominating you guys. Turn in these forms to room 301 in the academy if you want to take the exams. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Woohoo. One step closer to Hokage. Naruto shouted, keeping up his idiot mask. H.N., Sasuke grunted. On the inside, a chibi Sasuke was jumping around for joy. Yes. It's all thanks to Sasuke-kun anyway. Sakura screamed. The other members of Team 7 sweat dropped at Sakura's idiocy. A few days later, Naruto was training his ass off inside the training grounds of the Namike's mansion. Minato walked in and was surprised to see Naruto there. Naruto? How did you get in here? Minato asked. Naruto responded by telling him the story of how he got in here minus the Horatian part. Read the prologue. H.M. Well, it wasn't the way I wanted you to find it. Minato said. And by the way, I want to see your skills please. Okay too san. Here I go. Naruto said. He started with Taijutsu. He used the modified version of the Academy Taijutsu style that he adapted to his use. In reality he knew another style that will be revealed during the exams. Impressive. Adapting the academy style to your own use. Now on to Genjutsu. Minato said, Sorry dad, but I suck at Genjutsu. I can break out of it but I can't do it. Naruto said, Well in that case, on to Ninjutsu. Minato said, not knowing the surprise he was in for. Naruto threw five Horatian Kunai at a bunch of training dummies while shouting, Kunai Kage Bunshin. To multiply the five Kunai into fifty Kunai. Minato saw the Kunai and thought, No way. He couldn't. Naruto then said, Horatian no jutsu and vanished. When he reappeared, all the training dummies had fatal kunai wounds on their neck, head, etc. What the hell? How did you learn Horatian? Minato asked. Naruto told Minato the story of him learning the Horatian with the help of the Kyubi. Surprisingly, Minato had no ill will towards the Kyubi. Any other ninjutsu you know? Minato asked. Naruto did the Kage Bunshin and the Taju Kage Bunshin. He also did the Henge and the Kawarimi. He then decided to show his father what he was like out of his idiot form, as he called it. He gathered a ton of chakra, then shouted K.I. and there was a giant poof of smoke. True form Naruto appeared. He was about 5 feet 6 inches with his hair like Minato's. He was wearing ANBU style black shinobi pants, as well as a form-fitting black shirt. He had on a black combat vest similar to the Chunin vest. He had black shinobi sandals as well as a sword strapped to his back in a nondescript sheath. Minato could easily tell that Naruto was muscular, but in more of a runner's way. He had muscles, 
but not bulky muscles. Toned was a good word for it. Now let me show you some of the other ninjutsu I know. Naruto said, as he used the Shuriken Kage Bunshin on a shadow clone. As soon as the Shuriken hit the clone, it detonated. Bunshin Daibakuha Minato thought. Let me show you my masterpiece, a jutsu thought impossible by Shinobi. Naruto said, what could it be Minato thought? Naruto did a long series of hand signs, then shouted, Futan, Kazuyudin. As he said this, a dragon made of pure wind blades appeared, diving towards the training dummies at speeds rivaling that of Horatian, and literally tore all the training dummies into tiny specks. Mother of Kami Minato said. The entire training dojo had been torn apart. Every single thing that wasn't bolted down became tiny specks. The things that were bolted down had many deep slash marks in them. The downside to this justa though is that it took so much damn chakra. Naruto said before collapsing. Hmm Naruto, if you can control your chakra as well as a jonin can, you should be able to throw out two of these before you collapse. Based on what it did, I'm labeling this an S-ranked forbidden jutsu that will be added to the forbidden scroll when you reveal it. Minato said. My son is a genius. Thirteen years old, and he already made an S-ranked jutsu. And as a plus it takes so much chakra that a Sharingan user wouldn't be able to steal it. Minato thought with glee. Naruto was passed out however. The day before the Chunin exams. Naruto was walking around town when he noticed a rock following him. You can come out. And by the way rocks aren't square. Naruto said back in his idiot form. A poof of smoke appeared and coughing was heard. Dang it we used too much gunpowder again. So who are you guys? Naruto asked. I'm Moegi. The sassiest kunoichi in the academy. I'm Udan and I love math. And I'm Kanoamaru, the future Hokage, as well as the Sandame's grandson. Together we're the Kanoamaru Corps. The three kids shouted striking a weird pose. Usher. And by the way, Kanoamaru, if you want to get to Hokage, you'll have to work hard, cause there's no shortcuts. Also, you shouldn't label yourself as a target by shouting out you're the Sandame's grandson. Naruto said, oh and by the way, if you want to be Hokage you'll have to beat me first. Naruto said then left. Kanoamaru looked at Naruto with respect. He was the first one to acknowledge him as Kanoamaru, and not honorable grandson. The next day, Team 7 was right outside the academy where the written exam would take place. Ready guys? Let's go! Naruto said. Chapter 5 Chunin Exams Chapter 4 Chunin Exams Blah Speech Blah Thoughts Blah QB Slash Karama Talk Blah QB Slash Karama Thought I clearly do not own Naruto. If I did, Naruto would be with Inada and Sasuke wouldn't have a 20-foot kunai shoved horizontally up his ass. Okay guys, let's go. Naruto said as Team 7 walked into the academy, they were met with the sight of a green spandex-wearing boy saying, Please let us through. Only to be met with a backhand. It's a genjutsu, just walk on to the next floor. Naruto whispered to his team. Got it Sasuke said and walked with Naruto. Sakura followed like a obedient dog. Lee Tenten, -ten, it's time for us to leave. A tan coat wearing boy with white pupil less eyes said, Got it Niji. Tenten -ten said, They walked up to room 301 when Kakashi appeared and told them what would have happened if one of them chose not to take the exams. Troublesome, Naruto, you're talking this thing too? Shikamaru asked, Yep. Naruto replied. They both turned around to see Ino and Sakura fighting over Sasuke. Hey! It looks like the gang's all here. Kiba shouted, H hi and Naruto Kun. Hinata muttered, so you guys are rookies? A silver-haired man dressed in purple asked. Yep. Naruto shouted. Well, these exams aren't easy, this is my seventh time. However, on a bright note, I managed to create some ninja info cards on all the participants. Anyone you guys want to know about? Sabaka no Gara. Naruto said. Gara let's see. Whoa. This guy did eight C ranks and one B rank. The weird part is that he came out of those without a single wound. Kabuto said. But he's not better than Sasuke Kiyuen. Sakura screeched. Ino seconded that. Gakis. Shut the hell up and get to your assigned seats. A man wearing a black trench coat said. Everyone got into their seats as fast as they could. My name is Marino Ibiki and I'm your proctor for the first part of the Chunin exams. You will now take a written exam. Cheating will not be tolerated. Anyone who cheats five times will be eliminated from this exam. If you fail your team fails. Also, you will have 10 points. Each missed question is minus 1 point. Understood? Now start, Ibiki shouted. The written exams had Sasuke cheating with his Sharingan, Niji and Hinata using their Byakugans, Shikamaru winging it on the last one, Sakura being the brainiac didn't cheat, 
Ino who possessed the Kura and passing the answers to Choji, and Tenten, who used mirrors to get the answers and to relay them to Rock Lee. Time. Now for those of you still here, before the tenth question, do you wish to proceed? If you do be warned that if you miss it, you will remain a genin forever, Ibiki said with some killer intent, K.I. leaking out. Several teams immediately whimpered and chicken out. Bullshit. I'll take your damn exam. Even if I have to become Hokage from a genin. Naruto shouted. Is that your answer? Ibiki asked menacingly. Damn right it is. Naruto shouted. Then you pass. Ibiki said with a smile. He then explains to them the point of the first part of the Chunin exams. The next part will be administered by. He was cut off as a black ball crashed through a window and unfurled to show a sign with a purple-haired woman in front of it. The sign read, The Proctor for Part 2 of the Chunin exams, the sexy and single Anko Mitarashi. She was wearing a fishnet shirt, a mini skirt, and a tan trench coat. If it weren't for the trench coat, she'd be a walking Aika Aika paradise. Anquiry on time Ibiki said with a shocked expression. Damn. All right maggots. Follow me to the location of the second exams. The now identified Anko shouted. The Jenins followed Anko to the site of the second part of the Chunin exams. All right maggots. This here is known as the forest of death. Anko says and proceeds to explain the rules in the second stage. Okay guys I say we hit M hard. Grab a scroll and head for the tower. We're gonna need a heaven scroll Naruto said. That's good for a dobe. Sasuke said with a smirk. Okay Sasuke. Sakura, the ever loyal fandog or fandrel said. Three, two, one, start. Anko shouted, thus starting the second stage of the Chunin exams. One hour after leaving the gate, Team 7 came across a team from Kiri. Naruto eliminated the team without hesitation, on. Needless to say, Sakura was shocked. You cruel person. How could you kill like that? Sakura screamed. I don't think you're fit to be a shinobi then. If you can't stomach that, you are unfit to be a shinobi. Living in your sheltered life under your mom and dad, Sasuke and I have lived far worse than you. I never had a family. I lived on the streets for a year when the orphanage kicked me out at age four. Sasuke lost his entire family when he was seven. What did you lose? Naruto asked. Yeah right, you're just saying that to make you look cooler that Sasuke. The pink-haired idiot said. God damn it, he's telling the truth. Now shut the hell up you banshee. Sasuke shouted. You've been cursed by Naruto. I'll tell my M.O.M. about this. She's on the council, which makes her all powerful. Sakura screamed. Sasuke growled and knocked her out with a chop to the neck. Must have sucked playing the emo jackass, Team Naruto said with a smirk. Shut up, Dobe. Sasuke replied with a smile. Team 7 continued on the agreed-upon plan with an unconscious Sakura that Naruto had a shadow clone carry. They were about an hour away from the tower when Akusanin jumped out, summoned a snake, and blew Naruto away. The fight continues the same way it did in the manga, only with an unconscious Sakura. A slash in, sorry, but I'm too lazy to write the part where Oroki Pedo bites Sasuke. Naruto returned to see an unconscious Sasuke with a three Tomo seal on his neck. Damn it! The pedophile got to him. Naruto shouted in his mind. He set up a camp and stuck a coma seal on Sakura. What the coma seal did was to keep an unconscious person knocked out until the seal was removed. Naruto set up camp put his unconscious teammates into a makeshift tent he made, and made shadow clones to keep watch. The next morning, Naruto woke up to the apoof sound, as one of his shadow clones were eliminated. He saw Oto Nin with a tan shirt that had death written down it in a row, another Oto Shinobi who looked like a mummy, and an Oto Kunoichi that was wearing a tan shirt, and Oto camouflage boots. Where's the Uchiha? The guy with death said. I'm Zaku Abumi and I challenge him. I'm Dosu and I also challenge him. The mummy man said, I'm kin and I challenge the pink-haired banshee on your team. The camel pants wearing Kunoichi said, Wait, how do you know about the pink-haired banshee? Naruto asked, We heard her screeching and saw her pink hair before the second stage began. Zaka said, Oh, well if you want to get to Sasuke, you'll have to get through me first. Naruto shouted, Okay guys, we'll take care of shrimp here and then take care of the Uchiha. Dosa said, You shouldn't be so quick to put me down Naruto said because it might just come back to bite you in the ass. Futon, Kazuyudin, Naruto shouted as a dragon made of wind blades materialized behind him and dove towards the hapless Odo trio who were mercilessly ripped apart by the wind blades. Naruto went down on a knee due to the exhaustion the Jutsu put on him, even with his insane chakra mounts. Karama, can you recharge my chakra? I'll need it to get my teammates to the tower Naruto said to Kyubi. A slash N, 
I'll refer to Kyuubi as Karama, when Naruto is speaking to him, but otherwise as Kyuubi. Sure thing Kit, after all, a weak container would make me the laughing stock of the bijou world. Something I don't want. Kyuubi said as he recharged Naruto's chakra. Naruto picked up both his teammates and headed towards the tower. He managed to get there without a problem. He woke up Sasuke, who went kinda crazy with Orochimaru's seal on him, but Naruto was able to get it under control. He then removed the coma seal on Sakura which woke her up. He told her to shut up and let him do the talking. He and a now sane Sasuke opened both scrolls which began smoking. Sasuke, ditch the scrolls. Naruto shouted as he and Sasuke tossed away the scrolls. A poof of smoke appeared and out of the smoke came Irika. Irika sensei You were a proctor? Naruto asked. Sort of. I'm more of a countermeasure in case you opened the scrolls early. Had you done that I would have knocked you out until the end of the second stage. Irika said. Well now you'll have about four days to rest up before the third stage begins, cause you guys were the second team to arrive. Who was first? Sasuke asked. Those kids from Suna. They got here at night on the first day. Speedy little bastards. Irika said. So team seven rested for the next four days and watched as other teams made it in. Sasuke also got his curse mark sealed. The last day as soon as time ran out, all the teams who made it were called to the combat field. All the sensei were there as well as the sanding. Minato told all the members of the council that his return was to be kept a secret until the third stage of the Chunin exams. Sarutobi explained to the genins about the third stage and the preliminaries, of which Heid Gekko took over and resumed explaining. He asked if anyone wanted to quit, and Arain Neen quit claiming chakra exhaustion. Okay, open the giant screen Heid said. Two parts of the wall slid open to reveal a large screen. First match. Uchiha Sasuke vs Akato Yoro. As the two began fighting Sasuke noticed that his chakra was slowly being drained out. He jumped back and used Katan, Gokaku no Jutsu to send a fireball at Yoroi. Yoroi jumped to the side and avoided the fireball, but was knocked out with a chop to the neck by Sasuke, who used the fireball as a distraction. Second match. Aburaim Shino vs Hataru Shinji. The match was rather one-sided as the poor Aim Nin could not defend against Shino's Kikechu. Third match. Tsuruji Misumi vs. Kankuro. Misumi started the match by constricting Kankuro with his rubbery body. Misumi tried to get Kankuro to surrender, but Kankuro refused, so Misumi snapped his neck. In reality, all Misumi snapped was a puppet's neck, who proceeded to knock out Misumi with a gas. Fourth match. Yamanaka Ino vs. Haruno Sakura. The match was a joke, as it was more of a cat fight with the occasional punches. It ended with both contestants being knocked out. Fifth match. Tenten vs. Tamari. The match began with Tenten chucking all kinds of throwable bladed objects at Tamari, who blew them back with a kamataiki from her iron fan. Tenten growled and used her trump card, the Sashoryu, which also failed, as Tamari just blew all the weapons back, and cut Tenten up with her chakra-laced wind. Tenten fell and landed on Tamari's fan. Rock Lee attempted to avenge Tenten's defeat, but it was quickly broken up by Guy. Sixth match. Nara Shikamura vs. Ikari Saji. Saji started the match with a reign of Samban, but Shikamura used the shadows of the Samban to his advantage and caught Saji in his cage main. He then proceeded to throw a shuriken which Saji did as well, but Shikamura ducked back, while Saji ducked into the wall, knocking him out. Seventh match. Uzumaki Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba. Yahoo Akameru! Easiest match to us! Kiba happily shouted. Don't count me out too soon, Kiba! Naruto retorted. Hey Kakashi up for a bet? My student against yours? Karina asked. No problem, my student will win. Kakashi said with an eye smile. Okay, if Kiba wins, I get to burn those porno books called Aika Aika. Karina said. Okay, but if Naruto wins, you have to buy me another set of my books. Kakashi said. Deal both of them said. The match began. Kiba immediately started with a Tsuga that nailed Naruto in the chest. Ha! Huh. You're no match for me though. I didn't even use Akameru. Kiba gloated. On the banister. Looks like I win Kakashi. Karina said with a smirk. Guess again Kakashi replied. On the field. Geez, that all you got? If you're trying to be a mosquito, then good job. Naruto said as he came out and scathed. Grai can't beat me though. Kiba shouted as he threw a smoke bomb and joined Akameru as they went into a Gatsuga. Naruto expertly dodged all the shots and used a futon. De Tapa to blow away the smoke. Angered, Kiba fed a soldier pill to Akameru and went into a more powerful Gatsuga. Naruto dived out of the way. The Gatsuga ended up hitting a wall, stopping their spinning movement, 
and jamming them into the wall. That all you got? Then my turn. Futan, Rankudin. Naruto shouted as he inhaled, and sent a trio of air bullets toward Kiba, who was still stuck in the wall. The three air bullets nailed Kiba and Akameru, knocking them out. Shousa, Uzumaki Naruto. Hate shouted, on the banister. What the hell have you been teaching him Kakashi? To turn a dead last into that? Kurinai shouted, angry she lost the bet. Kakashi I smiled and said, I didn't teach him any of those moves. He's been hiding his skills. Oh, and my collection has 200 books in it Kurinai. Hope you don't go broke. Eighth match. Hyuga Hinata vs. Hyuga Niji. Niji went into his fate speech which was discouraging Hinata. Seeing how Hinata was on the verge of tears, Naruto yelled at her to not give up, and that he believed in her. Sadly, it still wasn't enough for Hinata to win. Niji defeated Hinata and continued to tell he how failures like her and Naruto were always fated to lose. Niji was stopped by the Jounins before he could kill Hinata. Typical main family treatment. Niji said, Wrong Niji, look behind you. Guy said, Niji turned around and saw Naruto with a standard kanai inches from his neck. Naruto was being restrained by Kakashi. Ninth match. Rock Lee vs. Gara. Lee had his advantage of speed, but it wasn't enough. Lee resorted to his trump card, the Hashiman. He opened the fifth gate and pummeled Gara. It wasn't enough to defeat Gara. Lee ended up losing the match with a crushed arm and leg. Tenth match. Akimichi Chuji vs. Yakushi Kabuto. Kabuto called Chuji fat multiple times, which is basically a death wish. Surprised, Kabuto ended up getting torn to shreds by a kunai-enhanced Nakudin Sisha. The medics looked over Kabuto who was severely injured, and hate called the match. Okay, now draw numbers to see who you'll fight in the finals. Anko said. The Genins drew numbers and the results were. Match 1 Uzumaki Naruto vs. Hyuga Niji. Match 2 Uchiha Sasuke vs. Gara. Match 3 Abirame Shino vs. Kankuro. Match 4 Nara Shikamura vs. Tamari. Match 5 Agnichi Chuji vs. Winner of Match 4. Here are the matchups. You will have a month to prepare for your match. Good luck to you all. Saratobi said. Chapter 6 Training, Finals, Invasion. I do not own Naruto. Kishimoto-sama does. Nuff said. Chapter 6, Training with a what the hell? Chunin exam finals, and an invasion. At the hospital, Kakashi-sensei, can you train me for the Chunin exams? Naruto asked. No, I'm training Sasuke. Sorry, Kakashi said. Can you at least give me a scroll to help me where I'm lacking? Naruto asked again. Sorry, I really need to help Sasuke. I don't have time to. He's facing a powerful opponent. That and I think he using Horatian was a fluke. You don't have the chakra control necessary to do anything other than brute strength. It's so shabby that you can't even do a genjutsu. I keep thinking that if I train you, you'll just waste my time. Kakashi said. So you're also tossing me away from you. I'm facing last year's rookie of the year, and someone who could just kill me. You're just like the villagers, always caring for their Uchiha golden boy. Naruto said venomously. I thought that if you couldn't train me, you could at least give me a scroll or something to learn from but I guess the demon brat doesn't deserve it. I regret everything I said about you being a decent sensei, Hataki. Naruto, wait, Kakashi said, but it was too late. Naruto shunchened away in a flash of lightning. I hope he forgives me, Kakashi thought. Naruto shunchened into the Hokage's office, where his father was busy doing paperwork. Damn it, this is an evil worse than the QB. Minato said. What, Tusan? Naruto asked. Paperwork. Minato shouted. I thought you said you had a solution to it? Naruto asked. Nah, I just wanted to torment the sand aim. Minato said. Oh, cause I just thought of a really good solution to it. Naruto said. What? Tell me. Minato begged, using puppy eyes no jutsu. Naruto's sweat dropped at seeing possibly the most powerful man in the elemental nations on his knees and begging. Two words to Sankage. Bunshin. Naruto said. Minato quietly walked over to the wall and began banging his head against it while muttering stupid over and over again. Ah, uh, dad? There's something else I wanted to talk to you about. Naruto said. Shoot. Minato said. Naruto proceeded to tell him about what happened in the hospital with Kakashi. Hearing this Minato face grew angry. I thought I taught him to not play favorites. It's very clear that he's not fit to teach. Favoring one student over the others will not be tolerated here. Minato angrily said. I'll have a word with him after the exams. Oh and Naruto, go by the hot springs, you should find a man with long white hair. He'll train you for the Chunin exams. Hm long white hair, you mean Jiraiya of the Sanin? Arrow Senin? 
Naruto asked. Minato cracked up at hearing his son call Jiraiya Erosenin. Regaining his composure, he said, yes. Jiraiya of the Sanin, he's your godfather, and he'll be teaching you my other prize jutsu. I know you're ready. Just don't let all this power go to your head. Minato said, got it, dad. Naruto said as he shunshin toward the hot springs. He wasn't surprised at all when Minato told him that Jiraiya was his godfather. Why would a Sanin take someone like him on a two-year training trip when he was ten? Said Sanin also told him to leave a heavily reinforced Mizu bunch in so no one would get any ideas that Naruto was missing. Naruto arrived at the hot springs to see Jiraiya shamelessly doing research. Naruto calmly walked over, stood bang Jiraiya and said, Kanoha Haiden Taijutsu Ugi, Senin Garoshi. Sending Jiraiya flying upwards and into the hot springs. Moments later, shouts of pervert and girly shrieks of pain. A few minutes later, a heavily bruised Jiraiya flew out and landed in a heap. Naruto healed Jiraiya using the Shosen Jutsu. Jiraiya stood up moments later. Damn it Gaki, that hurt. Jiraiya said, Sorry Godfather, but it was hilarious. Naruto said, cracking up. Wait, how do you know that? Jiraiya asked, surprise evident. Dad told me. Naruto said, He's alive? Jiraiya shouted, Yep, from the mission to Nami no Kuni. Naruto said, He said that you would teach me his other prize jutsu, that I will. First, it's called Raisingan, and second, let me go get some water balloons, and we'll go from there Jiraiya said as he left. Got it, Erosenin. Naruto said, Half an hour later, Jiraiya returned with a ton of balloons. Some were water balloons, and others were rubber balls. Okay Naruto, what I want you to do, is make this water balloon pop, like so. Jiraiya said as he made a water balloon pop use your chakra to spin the water to make it pop. From what Naruto observed, he noticed that Jiraiya spun the water in many directions. Naruto took a water balloon and spun it in the same way Jiraiya did. The water balloon popped with a splash. And no friggin' way. It took me weeks just to do that. Jiraiya shouted. Remember, I'm keeping all aspects of my abilities when you know how to do medical ninjutsu, you tend to be able to use your chakra very well. Naruto stated, Right, I forgot that you won that bet against Sanade on our training trip two years back. Jiraiya said, Flashback no jutsu. A ten-year-old Naruto was walking with Jiraiya. They arrived at Tenzakugai, a well-known gambling community. There, they found Tsunade. A slash N. The same thing happens where they take it outside. Only Naruto attempts the futon, Kazuryuden. They proceeded to make a bet. If Naruto managed to create a complete futon, Kazuryuden, Tsunade would train him in chakra control. However, she wouldn't return to the village. A week later, Naruto demonstrated his complete futon, Kazuryuden, shocking everyone watching. Tsunade kept to her end of the bet and trained Naruto for two years. That's where he spent his two years. Flashback no jutsu. Kai. Good times, too bad Sanadeheim didn't return with us. Jiraiya said. Okay, the next part is to pop this rubber ball the same way you popped the water balloon. The rubber is harder, so you'll need power. Like this? Naruto asked, as he popped the balloon. Yes like that Jiraiya said shocked. Okay, the last part is to not pop this balloon. This part takes control. Jiraiya said. This time, Naruto couldn't get it as fast as the other times. He and Jiraiya called it a day. The next day, Naruto informed Jiraiya of his own plans on training. He told Jiraiya that he planned to master the Raisingan, and tried to take Horatian another step. Over the next month, besides eating and sleeping, Naruto trained, trying to master the Raisingan, and trying to take Horatian another step. Two weeks passed and Naruto was finally able to form a perfect Raisingan. He took a day off from training and decided to visit Hinata in the hospital. At the hospital, Naruto walked into Hinata's room where she was still recuperating. Hey Hinata, how you doing? Naruto asked. Naruto-kun is in my hospital room, and asking how I'm doing. Hinata thought. F fine Naruto-kun, the medics say I'll be out in a few days. Hinata said. That's nice to know. Wait till the Chunin exams. I'll show the world just how strong I am. Naruto said. I believe I and why you, and Naruto-kun. Good I'll luck W with whatever your tea training go on. Hinata said, Yeah. You too to bail. Naruto said, Leaving the hospital, Naruto went back into the training dojo in the underground Namikaze estates. He kept working on taking Horatian the next step. However, he realized that it would take more time than he had to prepare. He decided to make a version not using the kanai for the Chunin exams. The day before the Chunin exam finals, he finally got it down. I'm very proud of you, son. 
You managed to do something that I never could do, Minato said happily. I hope you'll tell me how to do this too. Sure thing, Dad. After all, you were the one who invented this technique. Naruto said, happy he completed the his next step of Horation. Okay, son, during the Chunin exams, I want you to pretty much hold nothing back. If we demonstrate our power, missions will come to us. Go ahead and use Horation. I know it must have sucked playing the role of the idiot, so now's your chance to show everyone what they neglected. Also, go into your true form right before the match begins, Minato said. Understood. I have a hell of a lot of surprises for Hitaki, who abandoned me for his precious Uchiha. Not that I have anything against Sasuke. We've had to be friends in secret, cause if those crazy council members knew that Sasuke was my friend, they'd go ballistic. Naruto said, too bad the civilian side doesn't exist. Per Sakura found that out a day ago. Minato said, and I still need a way to get Tsunade back into the village to wake your mother up from her coma. The day of the finals, all the genin were here, even Sasuke. Apparently Kakashi didn't want to piss off Minato by being late to an important event. Before the matches began the crowd was very happy seeing their Yandame Hokage alive again. Some of them were hoping he would kill the demon brat Orochimaru, disguised as the Kazakage, was very worried. He decided to call the invasion off, and wait for another day. He signaled this to Kabuto who just stood there. Okay, cough, there's been a change in the order of the matches on the orders of the Hokage. Hate said. He's not dying in this FIC. Match 1 Uchiha Sasuke vs. Gara. Match 2 Abirame Shino vs. Kankuro. Match 3 Nara Shikamura vs. Tamari. Match 4 Uzumaki Naruto vs. Hyuga Niji. Match 5 Akimichi Chuji vs. Winner of Match 3. The contestants looked over the match sheet. The ones who weren't battling first walked upstairs to their seating area. Match between Uchiha Sasuke and Gara. Hey Jime. Hate shouted. Gara started things off with a Suna Shuriken. Sasuke expertly dodged while the crowd oohed and odd. Sasuke ran at Gara with speeds rivaling Rock Lee's. Guy was a little ticked off that Kakashi did that. In the stands, you taught him my students taijutsu style Kakashi, that was a little unyouthful guy said. Huh? Did he say something? Kakashi asked. Curse you and your hip attitude Kakashi. Guy said, back on the field. Sasuke could not hit Gara using taijutsu, so he resorted to ninjutsu. He jumped back and sent a katan, Ryuka no jutsu towards Gara's sand. When the flames and smoke cleared out, some of Gara's sand had turned to glass. Sasuke took advantage of this and sent fireball after fireball at Gara, glassing more and more sand. Gara's unglassed sand formed a sphere around him. Sasuke, finding no other way to get into the sand, jumped back and stuck to the wall using chakra. He performed three hand seals and formed a chidori. The genin other than Naruto were shocked, while the villagers went wild, seeing their Uchiha use a high level ninjutsu. Sasuke ran at Gara and impaled the chidori into the sphere but it didn't go far enough to hurt Gara. Suddenly, a tendril of sand erupted from the sand sphere and powerfully knocked Sasuke into the wall. It proceeded to choke him until hate called the match. Medic Nin saw to Sasuke, who wasn't really hurt. Accepting defeat, Sasuke went up to the stands to talk to Naruto. Sorry about the match dude, he was really strong. Naruto said, Yeah, there's always next year though. Anyways, when do you plan on dropping it? Sasuke asked, During my match. I'll show the villagers, and Hataki just who they kicked aside. Naruto said, Wait, you asked Kakashi-sensei to train you and he declined? Wow, I didn't think he was playing favorites. My respect for him just went down a few pegs. Sasuke said, The other genins were shocked at seeing Naruto and Sasuke holding a friendly conversation. Shikamaru and Shino, who both figured out something was up, weren't really surprised. Kankuro, Shino, please come down to fight. Hate said, miraculously not coughing. I forfeit. Kankuro said, not knowing of the cancelled invasion. Okay match between Temari and Shikamaru. Both of you get down here. Hate said again. Shikamaru was contemplating forfeit as well, but Naruto pushed him over the edge. Temari flew down on her iron fan, and the match began. Shikamaru was being torn up due to the Kamaitashis Temari was sending at him. He kept avoiding her attacks until he thought of a plan to use. He thought of one moments later and caught Tamari in his cage mane. He used his vest as a parachute to increase the length of his shadow, catching Tamari by surprise. However, he found it too troublesome to continue, as he was running low on chakra. Tamari won the match. Next contestants, please come down. Hate said. Naruto came down and said, before we begin, I need to show everyone something. In the stands, Sasuke was using his Sharingan to track the match, 
as he knew just how fast Naruto could be. He noticed something and asked Kakashi, Kakashi-sensei, why is there a genjutsu on Naruto? Kakashi looked at Naruto with his Sharingan and noticed the genjutsu. On the field Naruto gathered some chakra, shouted Kai, and vanished in a poof of smoke. When the smoke cleared, the crowd was shocked to see the unleashed form of Naruto. He was wearing a long sleeve black shirt that was almost like a second skin, causing Hinata and many other females in the audience to have a nosebleed. He wore black A and B style pants that were bandaged at his black sandals. He had a kunai and shuriken pack on each leg. He also wore a jounin style vest, only with less pockets, padding, and was also in black. On top of that, he wore an electric blue short sleeve trench coat with black flames on the bottom. On the back, it had Kanoha no Naidame Kiroi Senko written in kanji. He also had a sword wrapped in bandages on his back. The shinobi were noticing the resemblance between him and the Yandame. Kakashi, on the other hand, was cursing himself for saying that Naruto's chakra control was bad. Okay, match between Uzumaki Naruto and Hyuga Niji. Hey, Jime. Hate said and jumped away. Niji launched into his fate speech again before Naruto said, Did you write a script or something? Because I could have sworn that you said the same thing over and over again. A now somewhat enraged Niji began attacking Naruto. Naruto jumped back through a couple of wind chakra infused shuriken, surprising the Jounin senseis, and shouted, Shuriken cake bunshin. To multiply the two shuriken into a hundred, further surprising the Jounins. Niji used the katan to block the shuriken, but some managed to slice through the cocoon of chakra, surprising Niji. Angered, Niji kept trying to hit Naruto but kept missing. Eventually, Niji managed to have Naruto against the wall. He said, Fate has pinned you to this wall, where I shall finish you. You are in the range of my Diviniton. He then launched into the hack, Rokuji Yanshu. Two palms, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms, thirty-two palms, sixty-four palms. Niji shouted as he finished the attack. I can change your appearance, but a failure like you will never change your fate. Niji said, in the stands, Ha! I knew the loser wasn't as strong as Sasuke. Sakura shouted. He's a loser and will always be one. On the field, the Naruto that Niji hit, poofed away to show a severely damaged log. Oh come on, what did that log ever do to you? Naruto said. H how? It's impossible to dodge. Niji shouted surprised. I kawarimied when he launched into fate speech part 2. Naruto deadpanned. The crowd's sweat dropped at seeing Niji's reaction of a thundercloud over his head. Well, if that's all you got, then it's my turn. After saying this, Naruto took out a particular brand of kunai that the Jounins knew. Naruto jumped high up in the air and threw the kunai, shouting, Kunai Kage Bunshin, to multiply the Horatian kunai to 50, blanketing the field. Niji used the katan to block the kunai from hitting him. Was that supposed to do something? Niji asked condescendingly, in the stands, You can't beat Niji with kunai, even if it's that kind of kunai ten ten, and many other Jounins thought, back on the field. Now falling from the sky, Naruto shouted, Horatian no Jutsu, and vanished with a yellow flash. Niji suddenly felt severe pain, and flew into the wall. The Jounins were gobsmacked at seeing Naruto use the Raisin with Horatian. In the stands, what the hell Kakashi? What have you been teaching him? The other Jounin teachers shouted, Naruto will tell you of the answer. Kakashi said, regretting what he told Naruto, back on the field. Shousa, Uzumaki Naruto. Hate shouted. Naruto walked over to Niji, who was still conscious, and said, Don't blame your problems on fate. If a loser like me can change it, then what could a genius like you do? Naruto then used the Shosunjutsu to heal Niji of minor wounds until the medics arrived. Poor Kakashi was banging his head against the wall while saying damn it over and over again. The visiting nobles were all shocked at how powerful Naruto was. They began making plans to send high-ranked missions to Konoha, just like Minato thought. Naruto shunchin back into the stands. The genins crowded Naruto asking for answers but the next match began, and they all shut up. Match between Akimichi Chuji and Tamari. Begin! Hate shouted. The match was pitifully short, as Chuji could not get close enough to damage Tamari. He was severely cut up, and lost consciousness from blood loss. Luckily, the medics could heal him, and it wasn't too serious. There was a half-hour break before the next set of matches. Naruto answered all the questions his fellow Jenin and Jounin other than Sakura and Kakashi, asked. When the next match began, it was between Naruto and Gara. Mother will be very satisfied with your blood, Uzumaki. Gara psychotically said. That's gotta be the weirdest shit I saw slash heard today, Naruto said. The match began with Gara trying to catch Naruto in his Sabaka queue, which Naruto managed to avoid. 
a now completely psychotic Gara transformed into full Shikaka form, terrifying the villagers. Luckily, Minato had a seal in place so all attacks in the arena stayed in the arena. Naruto calmly bit his thumb, did the seals for Kuchio's no jutsu and summoned Gamabunta to the arena. Huh? What am I doing here kid? Gamabunta said. And we kinda got a problem with giant tanuki thing over there. Naruto said. It just had to be a biji you summoned me to didn't it Gamabunta said. You know me boss. Naruto said. Okay, Bunta, can you give me some more? I'm gonna cook the bastard. Naruto shouted. Got it. Gamabunta replied. Naruto created a shadow clone. Gamabunta spat out oil. While Naruto used the katan, carrier ending to light the oil. While the shadow clone used the weakened version of the futon. Kazuyuden to make the oil enhance flames even stronger. Combination Jutsu. Blazing Wind Dragon. Naruto shouted. The flaming dragon moving at Rock Lee speeds dove towards Gara in Shikaku form. The combination Jutsu flash fried the sand and made a life-size, glass Shikaku. Gara fell to the ground where he was caught by Naruto before he hit the ground. How, how are you so strong? Don't kill me. Gara fearfully shouted. I have friends to protect, they give me the strength that I need. You have people that care about you too. Your sister, your brother, they both care for you even though they're scared of you. I'll make a temporary block of Shikaku, but it'll limit your use of sand until we fix your faulty seal. Naruto said as he used the Gojio Fuin to cut off Gara from Shikaku's influence. Gara fell into the first sleep he ever had. Medic Nin came and took Gara to the infirmary. After Hate called the match, the crowd began applauding Naruto while shouting things like thank you for protecting us, and I'm so very, very, sorry for the way I treated you. Please forgive me. Naruto, who didn't know what to do just waved and grinned at the audience. In the stands, all the genin except Sakura were happy for Naruto being accepted. Sakura on the other hand was screaming about how Sasuke protected them with his awesomeness while Naruto just stood there. Everyone that heard it sweat dropped and made a mental note to send a submission for a new low for being retarded. Um, cough, next match between Tamari and Shino begin. Needless to say, the match was pretty boring compared to Naruto and Gara's. This match, Tamari blew all of Shino's attempts using Kikechu away with her fan. Shino forfeited stating that there is no logical way to win. Okay, there'll be a half hour break before the final match. Hate said, hold on. I forfeit the match. Tamari shouted. Why? Naruto asked. I'd rather live. Seeing how you beat the crap out of my little brother, I don't want to know how close I'd come to death. Tamari said. Winner of the Chunin exams, Uzumaki Naruto. Hate shouted as the crowd erupted into cheers of Naruto. Over and over again. Please wait until the judges confirm who is to become a Chunin. Hate said. During the announcement would be a perfect time to start, Shikaku or not. Looks like I won't have to cancel the invasion Orochimaru thought as he signaled it to Kabuto. A few minutes later, when Namike Uzumaki Naruto, Achiha Sasuke, Nara Shikamaru, Temari, and Aburayam Shino please come down? Hate said, shocking the crowd again. This time, many of the shinobi were fearing for their lives, Kakashi included. Said Jennings came down to the center of the arena. Jennings of Konoha and Suna. It is my honor to present to you the honor for making Chunin. You have earned this based on strategy, leadership, and strength. Congratulations to you all. Minato said as the crowd roared with approval. The genin put on their respective chunin vests, with Naruto moving his stuff from his old vest to his new vest. He sealed the old vest into a scroll, thinking it would make a great present. It was at this point that Orochimaru decided to start the invasion. The disguised Otonin in the arena began attacking the still-awake Konohanin. The Otonin thought they could count on support from Suna, but after seeing Naruto in action, the Suna Shinobi decided that facing two yellow flashes would be suicide and attack the Odo Shinobi. Minato on the other hand, Horatian to the Kage box where Orochimaru attacked him. Naruto was surrounded by Odo Shinobi who thought that he was easy pickings. Sadly for them, they didn't see Naruto use Horatian. Naruto threw his new Horatian shuriken into the enemy ranks and teleported around in the enemy formation, killing them all. Naruto noticed that his dad was fighting Orochimaru. Naruto teleported inside the purple barrier the Sound 4 created. How did you get in here? Orochimaru asked, surprised. I put a Horatian seal on my dad in case he needed backup. Naruto said, Naruto, as strong as you are, this is no place for you. Minato shouted. Get out of here. Orochimaru just sneered at the sight and used Edo Tensei to bring back the first two Hokages. Meanwhile, the Shinobi of Konoha, 
with the aid of the shinobi of Suna completely annihilated the enemy forces. Jiraiya summoned Gamahiro to crush the snake triplets. Back in the barrier. Forgive me too, Sen, but I have no choice. Naruto said as he made a shadow clone. Confused, Minato looked at him before he was grabbed by the shadow clone and harassed out of the barrier. A surprised Orochimaru smirked at the fact that only Naruto was left. He placed the seal tags in the Shodame and Nidame's heads and forced them to fight Naruto. Naruto didn't even have time to unseal his sword. After trading a series of jutsu and being caught in a giant forest, Naruto realized he had no choice but to use that jutsu. As he went into a taijutsu bout with the two former Hokages, he stuck a couple of explosive tags on the former two Hokages to buy some time. Forgive me everyone, but this needed to be done. The sacrifice of one for the many. Naruto said as he did the hand seals for the Shiki Fujin. No! Naruto don't do it! Minato shouted. The genin and newly promoted Chunin watching were confused. Minato saw as the Shinigami appeared behind Naruto. Minato had signed the contract so he could see the Shinigami. Minato started sobbing because he knew the result of the Shiki Fujin. The ninja around were wondering what was happening to make the Yandame break down like that. Only the Sandame and Jiraiya knew what was going on. Both men were also quietly sobbing. Oh, I'm so scared. Nothing happened. Orochimaru mocked. Naruto made two shadow clones that grabbed onto the first two Hokages. Naruto watched as the Shinigami began chanting in a language known by none. The chanting ended as the Shinigami's prayer beads wrapped around his arm, and a spectral arm went through Naruto's stomach. Minato saw this and just sobbed harder. His only son was going to die within a month of Minato getting to know him. What was worse was that he would have to tell Kushina if she woke up. Forgive me Shodame-sama, Naidame-sama. Naruto said as he pulled their souls out of their bodies, so young and already sacrificing his life for the village. I'm so sorry. Hashirama sends you, the Shodame Hokage, said with regret evident. You would have made a great Hokage. I am so very sorry about this. Forgive me. Tobarama sends you, the Naidame Hokage, said regretfully. F-U-I-N. Naruto shouted as the Shinigami ate the souls of the two Hokages. Now for you. Naruto said as he grabbed Orochimaru's shoulders. The spectral hand extended into Orochimaru's body and began pulling out the soul. Now Orochimaru stared in fear of the Shinigami, who he could now see. Karama, help me pull his soul out. Naruto mentally shouted. I'm sorry it had to end like this, Kit. You were the first one I ever respected, and this happens. Karama said as he began pulling along with Naruto. It's been nice working with you, my friend Naruto said. Likewise Karama replied. Orochimaru couldn't even summon the Kuzanagi, as Naruto already pulled out his soul's arms. The legs, torso, and head soon followed and Naruto sealed it with a cry of F-U-I-N. Orochimaru fell to the ground dead. The Shinigami began removing Naruto's soul as well. Tell everyone that I'm sorry this had to happen. Forgive me everyone. Naruto said as he also fell to the ground. A newly minted Chunin, dying for the village. Minato was crying and was in hysterics and asking why his only son had to die. At this point Kakashi realized what was happening. He felt so guilty because the student that he ditched to train Sasuke, just sacrificed his life for the village. All the Jounin had their heads down in respect for Naruto's sacrifice. Sasuke was on his knees sobbing. The other participants of the Chunin exams could hear things like, Why? And we were brothers in all but blood, you were gonna become Hokage. Hinata was openly crying, and the participants other than Sakura were all sobbing, even Shino. Sakura was just shocked that Naruto would do this. Naruto woke up in a place that was all white. Where am I? He wondered. You are in a place you humans call limbo. The Shinigami said. Shouldn't you have eaten my soul? Naruto questioned. Well I should have, but Kami decided to intervene. Again. Also, this is a one-time thing only, so don't get any ideas. The Shinigami said dot on another note. I have a mission for you. Okay, shoot Naruto said. Chapter 7 Aftermath Naruto woke up in a place that was all white. Where am I? He wondered. You are in a place you humans call limbo. The Shinigami said. Shouldn't you have eaten my soul? Naruto questioned. Well I should have, but Kami decided to intervene. Again. Also, this is a one-time thing only, so don't get any ideas. The Shinigami said dot on another note. I have a mission for you. Okay, shoot Naruto said. Chapter 7 Aftermath Point 1 I will send you back with a gift. What that gift is, you will find out soon enough. My mission for you is to kill Uchihamadara. I don't like the fact that someone can cheat death. No one cheats me. The Shinigami said, Deal. 
Naruto said, you should be waking up very soon. Good luck and kill that Achiha. The Shinigami said, back with the people in Konoha. Why Naruto? Why? Minato sobbed. I would have taken your place. Why is life so cruel? The Jounin suddenly felt the chakra pulse. They saw Naruto shakily stand up. To say that people were shocked would be like saying Jiraiya was slightly perverted. Minato was shocked which instantly turned to relief that his son was alive. I've always wanted to try this. Been working on it for a while. Naruto shakily said. Naruto formed a Raisengan in each hand and molded into the shape of a javelin. Raisengan. Long range form. Naruto shouted as he threw the two long range Raisengans, to Minato and Jiraiya's shock, into the barrier the sound four created. The barrier shattered and the sound four were blown into trees, buildings, etc. and knocked out. Naruto promptly collapsed. Minato ran over to see how his son was doing. He discovered that his son was still breathing, just a case of chakra exhaustion. My son lives! Minato happily shouted. Naruto lives! He then took Naruto to the hospital. All the shinobi watching erupted into cheers, even Sakura. However, she was screeching how Sasuke's awesomeness brought Naruto back to life. An annoyed Sasuke knocked her out, and stuck a coma seal Naruto gave him on Sakura. The crowd cheered again because Sakura was unconscious. Two weeks later, Naruto was in his mindscape. For those of you who don't know what a mindscape is, it's just the place where Naruto meets the Kyuubi in the anime and manga. Hey Kurama, sorry about scaring the crap out of you like that about dying. Naruto said with a grin. TCH. Stupid kid, thinking you could use the Shiki Fujin. What about your father? Kurama said. Well I'm alive so I guess I'm good. Naruto said. By the way, what did the Shinigami give me? He said he would send me back with a gift. Why asked me? Kurama asked. Well, you're in my mind and I guess that you could have some way of knowing. Naruto said. Got it in one kit. Got it in one. Okay, the gift the Shinigami gave to you is the ability to use Rantan, Storm Release. This gave you an insanely strong lightning and water affinity, along with your wind affinity, which was also strengthened to the point of no equal. I believe that you can use your Kazuryuden about five times now at full power. Also, he gave you Ranan because he thought it would suit your sword pretty damn well, Kurama said. That it would, that it would. Still, a super-powered blade, and three insanely strong affinities? Doesn't he think it's a little too much? Naruto asked. When you're facing Uchiha Madara team, I'm not sure even that's enough. Oh. That reminds me. Considering your horrible skill in Genjutsu. I've also decided to give you my own gift. Look in the mirror after you wake up and you'll see what I mean. You're gonna love slash hate it. Also, you're gonna need a way to counter Madara's Sharingan. Oh, and it's been two weeks, shouldn't you be waking up by now? Kurama asked. I could have woken up a week and a half ago. I haven't spoken to you in a while and I thought it would have been a good idea. By the way, here's your gift for helping me kill Oroki Pedo, Naruto said, as he changed the mindscape from a sewer to a very large meadow complete with a den and an infinite supply of giant rabbits. An overjoyed Kurama was bouncing around the meadow, enjoying the large open space. He now wore a collar with the hack fuin seal on it, instead of a cage and paper. Thank you, Kit. There's everything I could want to enjoy in imprisonment. Kurama exclaimed. No problem. Think of it as my thank you gift for helping me out all those years. Well, I gotta go. See ya. Naruto said. Naruto slowly woke up and his eyes adjusted to the bright light. He noticed he could see a lot clearer in objects, such as an open curtain flapping in the wind, seemed to be a lot slower. He looked into a mirror that just happened to be next to his bed and shouted, What the hell? This caused many of the medical staff, along with Minato to burst into the room. What happened? Who did it? Did you see him? I'll kill him. Minato shouted. No dad, I'm just surprised. Naruto said still in shock. Huh? Minato said as he looked at his son. What he saw shocked the hell out of him too. Naruto had a fully matured, three tomoed Sharingan. Only instead of being red, his was still blue. He tried stopping the chakra flow to his eyes, and the three tomo disappeared, leaving his normal blue eyes. He sent chakra to his eyes again, and watched as the three tomo reappeared. A slash N, yeah I gave Naruto the Sharingan. Before you get on my case for overpowering Naruto, read the summary slash description I gave. Also, if Madara's Sharingan can turn into the Rinnegan, it's not cheap. Underscore. H how the hell did you get that? Minato asked slash shouted. Naruto told him what had gone on in his mind, leaving an even more shocked Minato. Well, since this seems to be a day for secrets, 
I have one to tell you, Naruto Minato said. Your mother is alive. Ka-san is alive? Naruto asked tears forming. Did she abandon me to the villagers? What happened? Naruto. Your mother didn't abandon you. Minato said as he put up a silencing seal. Apparently those idiot civilian council members poisoned her in an attempt to kill her. But because she was the previous Jinchuriki for the Kyubi, the residual chakra nullified most of the poison. But it still ended up knocking her into a coma. She's here right now, but there's only one person in the world that could wake her up and that's Senju Tsunade of the Sanin. Bachan? She can heal mom? Then let's go. Naruto shouted before Minato held up a hand. Hold on, your mother's not going anywhere anyway. And the village comes first, that is the duty of the Hokage. Minato said, Okay dad, but once the village is better, can I go find Bachan, so she can come heal Kasan? Naruto asked. I want to be the one to bring her back. Okay, Naruto, but you will be going with, Snicker, Erosenin to find her. And I must say, calling Jiraiya Erosenin makes perfect sense. Minato said with a grin, Can I leave the hospital? Naruto asked that I think I'm good to go. All right, Naruto, but promise me you won't do heavy training for two days. Minato said, Okay, Tusan. I won't do heavy training for two days. Naruto agreed. After a few minutes, Naruto walked out of the hospital with his gear. He would have to get a new trench coat, as his was tattered from the fight with the two former Hokages. As Naruto walked down the streets, to his shock, he heard things like, There's the hero of our village who vanquished the vile Orochimaru. And Daddy, I want to be a hero like Naruto. Apparently word had been getting around the village that Naruto not only summoned Gamabunta to kick Gara's ass, but he almost died for the village, killing their most hated enemy other than the Kyubi, Orochimaru, in the process. Naruto was surprised at hearing this. He really was being acknowledged by the village. He decided to go tell Sasuke and see if he was up for a spar. Meanwhile in Minato's office, Kakashi could have been a lot better. So, my son who was not worth your time just saved this village, and demonstrated near-perfect chakra control, as well as defeating Gara the Jinchuriki of the Shikaku, who Sasuke couldn't defeat, and to top it all off, he damn near sacrificed his life for the village. I'm severely disappointed in you Kakashi. I thought I taught you to not play favorites. I'm not sure I can leave you as a jonin with this kind of blatant favoritism. I'll be demoting you to Tokabetsu jonin, docking your pay, as well making you do five missions of catching Tora the cat every day for a week. And yes, Tora does escape that many times a day. An angered Minato said, Kakashi was sweating at the fact that he had to catch Tora that many times. He knew he deserved it, but five times of Tora a day? That's gonna be hell. And Team 7 will now be disbanded, as Naruto and Sasuke have made Chunin. I will be dropping Sakura from the ninja ranks, as all she is, is a glorified fangirl. Minato said, Hi Hokage-sama Kakashi said, Tomorrow I'll be making an announcement about Naruto's lineage. We'll see how this goes. And Kakashi, you will not be training him unless he asks for you to train him. You had your chance but you tossed it away. Minato said with a glare, I apologize for my foolish actions Hokage-sama a guilt-ridden Kakashi said, Now get out. Minato said, Kakashi left without a word. Mentally, he was kicking himself for being a dumbass and not training all members of his team. Back with Naruto. Naruto had just arrived at Sasuke's house slash mansion. He told Sasuke about what had happened. Sasuke was happy for his friend and brother in arms. Naruto had then asked for a spar to see if he was still at his level. They had a good taijutsu spar, as ninjutsu would have leveled the Uchiha compound. After thanking Sasuke for the spar, Naruto decided to head to the academy to visit Iruka and the academy students to see how they're doing after an invasion. The second he walked into the Iruka's classroom everyone went dead silent. They had all heard, either on the streets, or through relatives, of Naruto's actions. Immediately, the students began crowding around Naruto asking questions. Get back to your seats! Iruka shouted using the demon head no jutsu. The frightened students all ran back to their seats in fear. Okay Naruto. How about you introduce yourself to the class? Iruka said, Okay, as you all know, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. My likes are training, ramen, and the hokages. My dislikes are fangirls, people with superiority complexes, and people who can't tell the difference between a kunai and the scroll it's sealed in. Naruto said, Okay Naruto, we're starting ninjutsu and shuriken lessons today, you want to help out? Iruka asked, hoping Naruto would help. Sure why not? It's not like I have anything better to do, Naruto said. The class went outside to begin the weapons throwing lessons. Naruto noticed how most of them didn't hold the shuriken in the correct position. 
he helped them get their throwing up to speed. Okay, now let's start on teaching you guys some ninjutsu. Iruka said. He taught the students how to do the Henjino Jutsu. Many students tried to, but there were problems with their disguises, such as oversized noses or missing scars. After the ninjutsu lesson, Kanoamaru asked, Boss, can you show us a super cool ninjutsu? I don't see why not. Naruto said. What do you guys want to see? The students discussed among themselves for what awesome jutsu they wanted to see. Can you show us your strongest ninjutsu? The students asked. Short range, mid, or long range? Naruto asked. Long range. Kanoamaru shouted. Naruto threw a couple of his new Hiroshin shuriken. These worked a lot like the Horatian kunai, except they were more easily thrown. Appearance-wise, it was a slightly larger shuriken with Naruto's Horatian seal formula on the blades of the shuriken. The disappointment the students had were turned into surprise as Naruto vanished in a yellow flash and reappeared where he threw the shuriken. This would be my strongest jutsu. It's an S-ranked jutsu developed by the Yandame Hokage. Basically, it's like the Shunshin no jutsu, only you move a lot faster, and you go a lot farther. Naruto explained. Satisfied, the students returned to the classroom where Iruka assigned them homework and dismissed them. Seeing how it was late, Naruto returned to the underground Namike's mansion. He saw his father in the training dojo. Hey dad, Naruto said. Hey son, I have some news for you. Tomorrow, I'll be announcing your lineage as my son so be ready for crazy jounins wanting to teach you and crazy fangirls. Minato said. Oh boy, Naruto said. Oh, I wanted to see what you did with your Gan. I remember you used the long-range form of it? Minato said. Oh. My Raisingan, long-range form. I noticed how the Raisingan is a powerful close-range jutsu. I wanted to increase the range but I didn't want to by using Horatian every time I wanted to attack someone far away from me. So, I tried to throw it. But I soon realized throwing a bowling ball of chakra isn't as easy as it sounds so I used the same principles of the Raisingan. Only I shaped it into a javelin, which is optimized for throwing. Naruto explained. I see. When you broke out of the sound force barrier, I only saw it hit the barrier to break it. I still want to see how it works on a non-barrier, Minato said, with a giddy look in his eyes. Okay, I'm gonna need a training dummy though. Naruto said. Minato used chakra to generate a training dummy. Naruto formed a Raisingan, long-range form in his hand and threw it into the dummy. The hurricane-like chakra javelin buried itself into the dummy where it detonated with the force of a Raisingan. Needless to say, the dummy was just a pile of hay afterwards. Please teach me that. Minato asked slash begged again. Sweat dropping, Naruto agreed and showed Minato how to do the jutsu which Minato began to work on. The next day, I wonder what this announcement's for. Kiba asked. Dino, it's troublesome anyway Shikamaru said. Making us get up before noon, troublesome. A few minutes later, people of Konoha. I have an announcement to make. Minato said. As you know. I perished in the battle against the Kyubi, but through a sheer twist of luck, I have returned to lead Kanoha. Also, as most of you believed, I had no child. However, I did have a child, I just didn't tell you. At this many shinobi began banging their heads against trees, walls, solid objects, etc. Yes, and most of you have seriously insulted my family as well by hurting my son. Minato said. At this, many of the civilians and shinobi began to sweat. My son who you all have been treating like crepus Naruto Uzumaki Namikes. Minato shouted as a shouts of what the hell. To OHS Chaiki we're screwed. Were heard. This is what Naruto heard as he walked out. Congratulations. Most of you have been treating my son like crap. Be happy that he's not the revenge type. Minato said with a grin. The day after that, Naruto headed to Higurishi's ninja shop for weapons. As he walked in. Many shinobi began bowing to him and saying things like forgive me Namike-sama and I apologize for my actions Namike-sama. Naruto merely just told them to not fret about it and that it was an honest mistake of people in grief. He also told them to call him Naruto. He walked up to the counter where Tenten was. Hey Tenten, do you guys have a pair of Kodachi that I could buy? Naruto asked. Oh of course Namike-sama. Tenten said. No need for that, just call me Naruto. I hate formalities. Naruto said. Sure thing Naruto-san. Tenten said as she left to go get a pair of Kodachi for Naruto to use. She returned momentarily with the Kodachi. How much will this be? Naruto asked. Your total will come to 1200 Ryo. Tenten said. Naruto paid for the Kodachi. Happy that Tenten treated him like a normal person and not royalty. He went home to start his next Horatian-related project. And cut. 
That's it for this time folks. This was more of just a filler so I can gather some ideas. Sorry if it kinda jumps back and forth. Like I said it's a filler, but it was a filler I wanted to write. Until next time, see ya. Chapter 8 Battle Royale Return of Tsunade Kushina's Awakening I do not own Naruto. Nuff said. At home, Naruto was trying to complete the next step in his H-iration. He got the seals done, but he still had trouble using it to its full potential. That being said, he tried even harder only to teleport face first into a tree. Itai must get this though must surpass Father Naruto groaned, rubbing his forehead. Suddenly, an ANBU appeared right in front of him. Naruto-sama, the Hokage requests your presence. The ANBU said and left. Naruto Horation to his father's office. You wanted to see me Hokage-sama? He asked. Yes, Naruto, you will be going on the search for Tsunade. You will be going with Minato said as he was cut off by someone jumping through the window and doing a kabuki dance. I am the great toad sage of Myobokuzen. The man who silences wailing babies with a turn of the head. The gallant master J-R-A-I-Y-A-H-H-H. He shouted. Both blonde sweat dropped at seeing their sensei do this. Hey Erosenin. They chorused. Not you too Minato. It's bad enough with Naruto calling me that but you too? W-H-H-Y-Y-Y? Jiraiya complained as Minato and Naruto cracked up. Okay, back to business. Naruto, you will be going with Jiraiya to find Tsunade and bring her back to Kanahidakur. This will be regarded as an S-ranked retrieval mission. You have one hour to pack. Good luck to you both. Minato said as Naruto vanished. So what's this I hear about a Raisingan, long-range form? Did you create it Minato? Jiraiya asked. Oh that? It's a Raisingan, but sharpened into a javelin form and thrown at an enemy. It detonates on impact. Basically, think of it as a Raisingan, stabbed into someone and exploding. Oh, and I didn't create it. Naruto did. Minato said with pride. Jiraiya's jaw was on the ground at hearing that. Here was an S-rank technique that was upgraded from an A-rank technique. He had to get Naruto to teach him it. One hour later. Let's go Gaki. Jiraiya said as they left Konoha to search for Tsunade. Half an hour later. Naruto? Jiraiya asked. Yes? Said Naruto. Do you think you could teach me the Raisin Gan, long range form? Jiraiya asked with the puppy eyes no jutsu active. Sigh fine, first we need to get some javelins, and some wood. Naruto said as Jiraiya ran off in a trail of dust to get the materials. Moments later, Jiraiya ran back with a huge supply of javelins and wood. Okay. The first step to do this would be to create a chakra casing around the javelin. Naruto demonstrated. Oh, and doesn't this mean you have to call me sensei when you do this? He asked with a grin. Stupid Gaki sensei Jiraiya muttered with a thundercloud over his head. He immediately tried to do as Naruto did, but found it pretty damn hard to create a chakra casing around the sharp object around the javelin. It was one thing to case chakra around a kunai, but a javelin meant that he had to extend his chakra to cover the entire javelin. Unlike the standard Raisingan, there was no actual trick of spinning the water, just making a chakra casing. Five days later, Jiraiya finally managed to cover the entire javelin in a chakra casing. Naruto showed him the next step, which involved using chakra to carve a piece of wood into a javelin. This step involved much swearing from Jiraiya as well as a hell of a lot of time. While Jiraiya was of researching Naruto had a confrontation with Itachi, who strangely asked about how Sasuke was doing. Naruto gave his answer with a Raisingan. At that time, Jiraiya returned and you know how it goes from there. Two weeks of training later Jiraiya finally managed to get the second step down. At this point they arrived in Tanzakugai, where Jiraiya said Tsunade would probably be. Back in Konoha. Lee did you hear? The ever so youthful Naruto-kun has gone to find Tsunade so she could heal you. Meito Gai shouted. Y-O-S-H. If Naruto does not bring her back I will do 600 laps around Konoha on one leg. Lee said. Lee. You are becoming more and more youthful. Guys shouted as they went into their weird hugging sunset thing. Lee, G.I. Sensei. Lee, G.I. Sensei. The two kept shouting as they freaked out the entire hospital staff who, to their horror, couldn't break the genjutsu no matter how hard they tried. Ibiki, who was in at the moment, decided to record them to use as a torture device. Back with Naruto and Jiraiya, Naruto shuddered. I get the feeling that my name was used by some creepy people and a creepy genjutsu. Help. A monster! A random civilian shouted, running out of Tanzaku guy. Wait, what kind of monster? Naruto questioned. A snake. Help! The poor man screamed. With Tsunade. Tsunade-san, Oto needs you to bring back Orochimaru, 
We know that you have some way to do it. Kabuto tried to say, You're an idiot then, I have no way of bringing back anyone from the dead. Sanade said, When did I say he was dead? Orochimaru-sama has implanted pieces of his soul into his curse seals so if you could just extract the soul and bring back Orochimaru-sama, he'll bring back your two loved ones Kabuto said. Tsunade gasped. Gee give me some time to think about it. Hours later, Jiraiya and Naruto headed into a bar slash restaurant where they saw who they were looking for. Hey Bachan! Long time no see. Naruto happily shouted. Hey Gaki! Where have you been? Tsunade greeted. Here and there. But I have something OT ask of you Bachan. Will you return to the village with us? Naruto asked. You know how I feel about the village Naruto Tsunade said. Here, let's all go to the hotel room and I'll tell you what's been going on. Naruto said, at the hotel room, I see so Minato and Kushina are alive but Kushina is in a coma, Tsunade said. Oh, and I heard about the offer Kabuto made. Let me tell you about what it does. You see, he'll bring them back as a human sacrifice and they're really just puppets controlled Y Oroki team. He brought back the first two Hokages and forced them to fight me. I had no choice but to use the Shiki Fujin to defeat them and kill Orochimaru. Luckily for me, Shinigami-sama and Kami-sama send me back to kill one Uchiha Madara. They say he's been living too long. Naruto said. A horrified Tsunade said, Yeah, I guess it's time for me to return. I am missing Sensei now that I think about it. I'll tell you my answer later. Days later, Naruto, Jiraiya. Tsunade-sama vanished. A frantic Shizen shouted. What? Let's go Gaki. Jiraiya shouted. They arrived to the site of Tsunade trying to beat the crap out of the Sound 4, who escaped from an ANBU prison with help from Kabuto. Which just makes me wonder how crappy the ANBU are I mean, if Kabuto can kill four of them no problem, and Naruto beat the shit out of Kabuto, wouldn't that make Naruto better than ANBU? Just a question. While Kabuto watches on, Tsunade ended up seeing blood which made her freeze due to her fear of blood. Bachan, we'll take care of this. Naruto shouted. Kabuto growled in anger which then turned to a smirk. Well, 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 if it isn't Naruto-kun. I'm gonna kill you slowly, painfully for what you did to Orochimaru-sama. Kabuto said as he pulled the Kusanagi out of his mouth. Let's see how well the Kusanagi cuts into you. Naruto smirked in reply. One legendary blade should be countered by another should it not? He asked. What do you mean, boy? Kabuto shouted. Then allow me to show you a legendary blade of my own. The blade blessed by Sasano himself. Arashi and Oken, Sword of Storms, Naruto shouted as he pulled the sword he carried off his back as the bandages flew off. It revealed just a standard-looking double-edged sword with a hexagonal crystal for a pommel. The cross guard was angled upwards at 45-degree angles with points on the end. That's it. Your mighty sword blessed by Sasano? Kabuto mocked. That's not all. Oh and by the way, congrats on pissing off my sword. Naruto smirked. Arashi no Ken, Kayan. Sword of Storms unsealing, Naruto roared as the cross art of the sword folded down, and a pair of storm gray wings unfurled and stiffened to form a badass looking winged cross guard. The blade extended, expanded and darkened to storm gray. The hexagonal crystal for the pommel was storm gray as well with an electric blue lightning bolt in the center. The crackling of electricity could be heard all around the sword. Everyone could feel the sheer, unrivaled power of the sword. And no way, the legendary Erish or no Ken? How did he find it? Tsunade thought. What the hell? The Gaki said nothing about this? Jiraiya thought. Then a legendary sword duel it is. Kabuto calmly said. While inside he was thinking holy shit what the fuck I am so screwed. The two rushed at each other and began a Kenjutsu duel. Kabuto was thanking Orochimaru for teaching him some degree of Kenjutsu. A few slashes and parries later, Naruto had disarmed Kabuto and had Erisher no Ken at Kabuto's neck. A pity. And here I thought I was gonna get one hell of a sword duel where I had to use Erisher no Ken to its full power. You barely made me hit 5%, Naruto said with a bored tone. Gur sound 4. Kabuto shouted as the sound 4 attacked Naruto, while Kabuto jumped away, using Naruto as a wall to push off of. Good. This'll let me test out a new toy. Naruto said as he pulled out one of his Kodachis and channeled it with his chakra. The Kodachi glowed yellow before the color died down. Everyone there could see the familiar Horatian markings on the Kodachi. Naruto stabbed the Kodachi into the ground with another burst of chakra. Here we go. Naruto said as he vanished in yellow flash while deep slices began appearing on the bodies of the sound four. Ak. You win today Kanoha scum, but next time we meet I will have your head namikaze. 
Kabuto roared in pain as the Odo Shinobi sunk into the ground. Erisher no Ken, Fuen Naruto said as his blade returned to its unsealed form. He put the blade back into its storm gray sheath and walked to Jiraiya and Tsunade. W what the hell? Where'd you get that sword? Jiraiya asked. On our travels. Remember that we spent about a month before we found Tsunade. Naruto answered. Then why did you not tell me? Jiraiya asked. I thought it would make a hell of a surprise when I used it. Naruto said with a grin. Still a prankster at heart Jiraiya grumbled. Then what the hell was that with the Hiration? Tsunade shouted. Oh that? I've been working on it for a few days. I kept warping into trees, or not far enough. Originally it had the seals only on the hilt so I pretty much ended up warping into the Kogachi. That's when I got the idea to add the seal formula on the blade as well. It solved my problem so damn fast. Before, I could only teleport about 5 meters around the Kodachi, but with this, I can teleport in a 1 mile radius around where I planted the Kodachi. Naruto explained as he pulled the Kodachi out of the ground and cleaned it. I incredible. Was all they could say, and here I was, hoping he would summon Nanda. Naruto grumbled. Hikari always had a debt to settle with the bastard. Hikari? Tsunade asked. Oh. She's my phoenix summon. Found the scroll on the trip. Lucky me. Naruto said. Jiraiya didn't react as he had known about the scroll. So let me get this straight you have not only a legendary blade but also a legendary summons? Tsunade asked. Yep, and I also use the toads as a summons as well. Naruto grinned. You're coming with me the next time I go gambling Tsunade said. Yeah sure why not Naruto said as he collapsed. Kabuto had gotten a lucky strike in with a chakra scalpel as he pushed off Naruto. No. Stay with me Naruto. Tsunade cried as she managed to get over her fear of blood. She was not going to let someone dear to her die again. Flashback no jutsu. Oi Gaki. Tsunade shouted. Yeah Bachan? Naruto shouted back as he walked over. Why do you want to become Hokage anyway? All I see is a job that basically requires you to die. Tsunade said. To gain the respect of the villagers and my brothers in arms. And because to be Hokage is my dream. Naruto said. Tsunade was surprised but didn't show it. She couldn't help but see an image of Dan and Iwaki beside Naruto saying those same words. Flashback no jutsu, Kai. The next day, as she said, Tsunade had dragged Naruto to the nearest gambling house, where, with Naruto's sheer luck, cleaned out the house and managed to pay all her debts and still have enough to pay an S-rank bounty. Tsunade squealed like a little girl when she won all that money and damn near killed Naruto with one of her hugs. Jiraiya was off to the side grumbling about Lucky Gakis. A week later, the group entered Kanoha and were greeted with cries of Tsunade-sama is back. And I knew Namake-sama could do it. He is a Namake's after all. Which caused Naruto to groan. They returned to the Hokage's office to meet Minato. After giving the report Minato literally fainted due to shock. Moments later he came to and asked slash shouted what the hell. Where do you find those? On my travels with Erosen and Dan. Naruto answered. Minato then said, why am I not surprised something like this happened I should have known. Anyways, back to business. Tsunade-san, you know that my wife, Uzumaki Kushina is in the hospital right now in a coma. Can you manage to get her out of it? I'll have to take a look and see. Tsunade said. The group left for the hospital and went into Kushina's room. Let's see ya. Yeah. I think I can bring her back from the coma. It's kinda like the Tsukiyomi that per Kakashi keeps getting into. Tsunade said. But it's not Tsukiyomi. It's a poison that was supposed to kill her. Lucky for her the QB still had residual chakra to purge the poison from her body. I'll get started right away. A few hours later. W where am I? A now awake Kushin asked. Keika-san? Naruto shakily asked. Nerachan? Nerachan. Kushina happily shouted and bear hugged Naruto. Don't leave me out of this Minato said. And Minato? Didn't you use the Shiki Fujin? Kushina asked. Minato tells her the story of the childish fight between the gods. And apparently, the drive to use the Shiki Fujin runs in the family, cause Naruto here killed Orochimaru with it. According to Naruto, according to the Shinigami, Kami intervened, saving his life. Minato said as Kushina gawked at hearing this, Narachan, please don't try that again. I basically lost you once. I don't want to lose you or Minato kun ever again. She cried. It was a one time thing also so I'm not trying that unless as a last, last resort. Naruto said, calming his mother. Moments later, Jiraiya appeared. Aigaki, we gotta get back to my oboe cousin. Fukasaku and Shima didn't like the fact that you had to leave. They really want you back for sage mode training. 
I'll be using the English version of Sanimoto, just cause it sounds cooler, and it's easier to understand. Sorry to those of you who like the Japanese version, alright. Sorry Kasen, but I gotta resume Sage Mode training. Naruto said, S Sage Mode. At just 13 years old? Even I couldn't do that yet. Minato cried. Apparently the toads took a great liking to him as he doesn't summon them for weird kabuki dances also. Both the great toad sages and I believe that he's ready. Minato, I'll probably take you to Mayobokuzen after Naruto's done. Jiraiya grumbled in a corner with a thundercloud above his head. Were Minato and Kushina's responses before they cracked up laughing. Thank you sensei Minato said when he managed to control his laughter. It's not funny. Jiraiya indignantly shouted. Time to go he said as they were reverse summoned to Mayobokuzen. What, if Naruto Namake's Chunin exam Sasuke bashing? And thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel. And leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.